All right, so we're going to call the meeting to order and just announce in accordance with the open meeting law, the board states for the record, this meeting is being recorded by NORCAM and may be recorded by other local media. It's also being recorded and broadcast by... Now the would like you to unmute your microphone. You can press star six to unmute. By the town of North Reading via Zoom. You so, are unmuted. We all set? All right. Can we please rise to say the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Our first order of business is actually public comment. I am going to note that I am going to note that Herbie Batchelder was waiting in the wings to come and address us, so we are, we're sorry we took way longer in executive session than even we thought, and we, we, we did see him out there, and we appreciate, appreciate his service. He's going to be retiring this week, so he was waiting to address us, but maybe, maybe he can come back if he wants to. Hopefully, on the, on the yes, that's great. That's perfect. that's perfect. We have public comment as our first order of business. So is anyone here to speak in public comment or is anyone joining us to speak in public comment? I hear none. So we can move on to our next order of business. Mr. Gilberto, you don't have, there's only one person doing <laughs> that. And we have a, an exciting proclamation. We have the next order of business is a Purple Heart Community Proclamation, and we're joined. We're joined by our Veteran Services Director. Just give us a second. All set? Welcome, Mrs. Magner. Well, thank you all and for And Mr. Stratton's here, too. Um, first, I'd like to acknowledge Mitch Stratton, who is also our Vice President for the Veterans Events Committee, as well as the Commander of, Vice Commander, or the Treasurer for the uh, VFW, Adjutant. Most of us recognize you in your militia uniform, <laughs> <laughs> which you did not wear today, oh, but today. welcome. Yeah, earlier this afternoon. Mm -hmm. All right, so. Just casually. <laughs> So, um, Purple Heart Day is every August, August 7th, and, why is this not the one? There's this thing in the way. Oh, keep the tabs. Tabs are through. Must have been done like me. Okay. I'm going to try to move this through this as quickly as possible, folks. What is the Purple Heart community? Mrs. Uh, Magda, take your time. Yeah, please take okay. your time. It's okay. This important. Okay. Honoring our warriors who have sacrificed for their country, those who were killed in action, those who were wounded in combat. By committing to this, you're placing road signs at major roads entering into North Reading and agreeing to raise the Purple Heart flag and lighting structures in purple each August 7th to show our appreciation and support. Becoming a Purple Heart community will automatically place us on the Purple Heart Trail. The Purple Heart Trail is a program that began back in 92 at Mount Vernon, Virginia. The goal was to make the public aware of the Purple Heart Medal and what the medal represented. Roads, bridges, highways, and trails were designated as part of the Purple Heart Trail. The Purple Heart Trail group so did the request from businesses, colleges, universities, cities, towns, sports schemes, airports, buildings, and many others. The Purple Heart designation is an outward expression of an internal desire to recognize and honor recipients of the Purple Heart. The Purple Heart is presented to men and women of all military services that have been injured or killed in action against an enemy of the United States. What would North Reading be agreeing to by becoming a Purple Heart town? North Reading would agree to honor our Purple Heart recipients and Gold Star families each August 7th in, 
by raising our purple heart flag as well as lighting structures in purple. We have steps that, uh, that we have to go through to, be, to become a Purple Heart um, town. So um, the Veterans Department and the Veterans Events Committee are to submit a request to the select board to become a Purple Heart uh, community in writing, which I believe everybody received a letter on my end. Next, we would gather a listing of town Purple Heart recipients. To date, we have gone through, I should say, my assistant Catherine has gone through every file that we have, and she's come up with 39 recipients to date of what we have present in the office, um, and uh, as far as their files and discharges. Um, in addition, what we did was we put it into the newspaper um, we're going to be getting it up online as well onto the website. So we're looking for other others to come forward um, to so we can acknowledge them. Then you, once you've made a decision to to become um, a Purple Heart community, um, um, to write the proclamation which you have before you, um, and then we would decide on a date of presentation. The number of signs for roads entering in North Reading would be another thing we would have to decide on. Um, I went through um, Mike over at the, uh, the I, I, the GIS, and he sent me over, um, went through the maps, and he found the same ones I did. 28 coming from Andover, 28 coming from Reading, and then 62 from Middleton, and 62 from Wilmington. Can you put more up? Absolutely you can. There's roads that's, that we're not acknowledging or we should acknowledge. We absolutely can do that. Um, we would order pins or challenge coins or give some kind of a presentation to the recipients in the Gold Star families and plan for media coverage. <clears throat> what is the cost to the town? Well, when I first opened up their site and everything and I was looking at it, at one point, they were, I, I, from what I understood, was um, giving so many signs to each town or city community, um, but that has gone by the wayside. So they usually typically look at other entities to uh, foot the bill for the signs, um, such as your VFWs, your legions, your DAVs. Um, a rough estimate I received from CR Signs is $95 each. Um, I also chatted with um, one of the uh, members of the Purple Heart, Order of the Purple Heart, and he said that was, there was a place in, in Lemonster that did them as well for a good price, and he said that was basically the price that they were getting. So, um, CR Signs is on the same page. So right now, technically, looking at it, we're gonna need four signs. So roughly around 400 for the signs, then the Purple Heart flag uh, <clears throat> runs approximately $100. Um, there's also double-sided, uh, it was just a, a, another thought mode in, in lieu of the flag or in addition to a double-sided um, garden flag, uh, uh, pole flag that run about $24 each, like we put on the, by the common there on the streets there, um, on, the, on the light posts. Um, and then obviously presentations to the recipients. I'm, I'm roughly going with 250 to 350, depending on how many show up. Um, but I did get a cost. The pins themselves cost about six dollars each. Challenge coins. I'll get a price on that. That's to be determined because that goes by the number that you order. Um, same with the coffee mugs as well. But I've worked with these the two of these uh, entities in the past, so that would be something we would give the Gold Star families and the recipients. So whether we decided to do a pin and a coin or a pin and a coffee mug, but you know, just something to, to thank them for their service and uh, let them know we're thinking of them. This is a typical road sign and what they look like. They roughly run, he, he, we, don't, we can choose the size we want. So that was, I found that out today. They're not mandating a certain size of the town a certain size of the sign. Um, so um, typically they're either, <coughs> excuse me, 12 by 18 or 18 by 24. 
And this is the map of the, that should, uh, my apologies, but it's kind of hard to see the 28 there, but in the 62, but this is 62 and then 28, showing what, what I was given by GIS for the roots. Um, <clears throat> this is a, uh, what the double-sided uh, garden pole flag would look like if we were gonna do that. Should we choose that? And this is one of the, one of the types of flags that, that are also available as well. And they're right on their site in their store. Um, and then it would be a matter of once we decide on the date, then the ceremony would be obviously um, uh, getting uh, information out and invites out to the recipients, their families, as well as the Gold Star families. Um, the Order of the Purple Heart guest to present um, the Senator, State Rep, Select Board, Town Administrator, BFW Post Clergy, Veterans Event Committee, and the North Reading Community. Uh, we would have a presentation of colors, national anthem, a blessing, speech, the proclamation, presentation of the flag, signs, and lighting of structures, a roll call and presentation of points and pins, and then refreshments after. Um, there was one thing I wanted to point out that um, one of the things that they try to, uh, they encourage, highly encourage, is um, even though the Purple Heart recipients may not, some of them aren't with us anymore, um, and the ones that are with us, that we want to hear their stories. So you want to leave time and, and, and be able to find a way um, to have them tell a little bit about their stories and what went on and how they got their purple, they earned their purple hearts. This is a list of the recipients that we have to date. Um, they're all in alphabetical order. And we've got the proclamation in front of you. Um, and there's currently, actually, I'm going to give you an update, there's about 125 towns right now that are communities, uh, Purple Heart uh, communities, and automatically go on the trail. The other thing is, is the, the order, uh, the military order, the Purple Heart will, um, will also put this up on uh, our, pro our proclamation up on their website, and um, so we're acknowledged and we get added on for all, for the, uh, for the program. So with that, oops, with that, um, these are the most newest ones that I found that have North Andover. Um, so we have quite a few, like I said, it's 120, about 125 pounds communities right now with it. So basically, if you're looking at a financial figure, you're probably looking under a thousand dollars easily. Okay. That's great. Do we have questions, comments? Mrs. Gonzalez. Did you talk to um, State Rep. Jones or Senator Tarr about money from the state? I can that? look into that, but um, it's it's such a small number, and I've, I've been actually speaking with Rich here um, that you know we might put some feelers out to see if we can see if the BFW can possibly support the, yeah, yeah. the program for us. Okay. Mr. Walner? Just a quick question. That ceremony, is that every year you do the ceremony? Or is you that, is that kind of an induction and then you? You you can if you choose, but you, you are not mandated to do a ceremony up here. You're, what, you're, what you're agreeing to is acknowledging, lighting, lighting up okay. the, um, the structures and, um, and, and raising the, the flag. Mm -hmm. the yeah, gotcha. flag. And then if anybody knew how you come to in, be injured, in Killed Come from right combat, I assume you would do something else right next to the Oh, absolutely. That absolutely. Champion, that's yeah. part of a, that ceremony. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. for me, I mean, it would make sense, you know, because things obviously, you would get more in bunches. So, I mean, I'd want to have some extra pins, you know, so yeah. that when the thing, if, if and when things like that happen, we would have them available as well. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Do we choose the structures? <clears throat> Like the absolutely, Evo, you can. We decide where we want to light. Yeah, them. absolutely. Okay. Any other? Okay. Questions? I've seen people do trees, mm -hmm. um, bases of trees, which we got a huge one up in the Um Last year we did the um, the gazebo. Yeah. We did the gazebo, but you know the more the better. You know, I mean, it's we already have some 
purple lighting already set aside that we that we had for last year so we did a social media light it up blue for the support the police so you could do a light it up purple for, you exactly know? yeah, yeah. Or another Maybe another thought it. mode would be is to present, ask people if they want to put, you know, a purple light in there. That's what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. On their home. On their home. Well, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions, comments? I think it would be nice for you to. I'm sorry. Did you raise it? I'm sorry. Go ahead, Mr. O'Leary. No, I was just going to say. It's long overdue. So thank you for bringing it forward. I think it's a great idea, a great suggestion, and I think we should embrace it. And if we can look back too as to uh, some of the veterans that have passed away, it's been more than 39, I would think, but um, the recipients of And it would be, you know, former residents of town, if they were yes. residents of the Yes, out. so if they were living here and then moved out, we'd still invite them back. Right. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Perfect. Just like we would if we were, if, you know, somebody um, served in the, served in, uh, you know, in the. Uh, well, you must have one of the a lot of work from when the, when the wall was here. Was, uh, I said, uh, you must have a pretty good list to work from you know, when you had that wall come. Yep. I mean, you have a pretty good yep. list of people there. Yep, so we went through that listing and everything, and right now she's trying to track down um, addresses when? and uh, you know, former you know, family members of the uh, list that passed on. Yeah. I think it's terrific. And, and another cool thing that I've seen done, too, is I've seen parking spots designated specific to that, as well as I've seen them for veteran-only parking. Yeah. Um, those, so those are other thought modes yeah. that you can put in, you know, and think about. Can I, I, can I just take a stage? Sure, and, sure. Um, so about a year ago, um, Representative Jones just kind of said in my ear, have you ever thought about making this a Purple Heart community? I don't say what is that. And he kind of generally told me. So I went right to Sue. And she said, oh, that's been on my bucket list. That's been on my radar. And I said, then do it. And boom, here we are. Here we are. So kudos to you. And you know, great job bringing that forward. I, I think it would be nice for you to have kind of a, a living archive when you say that you want to get the opportunity for veterans to basically tell this, recipients of the Purple Heart to tell their story, or even for those that have, you know, died in combat, to get some sort of, even just one page to keep a, you know, a living arc, a, a living book, a book exactly. of this, yep. that you could, you know, for the first one, assemble that for those that passed away, just even the story, the, the, the Mm. Veterans Administration probably has a story of how they were awarded it or some way maybe a living relative is still here that could s explain it and then make a book like an out you know of, re of recipients and then if you have a veteran that wants to you know speak their story or explain their story mm -hmm. maybe they could do a little something to add to it to to write about the circumstances that you know resulted in their being awarded I think it's something to kind of keep that, uh, you know, alive that people can look at whenever they want, not just on August 7th, but whenever they right. want to. Which would be a great piece to have, whether we keep a piece here, and, as well yeah. as at the, at the library, but I think it's, that, that's huge to, to, to know the, the story, understand the story yeah. behind it, you know, I mean. Yeah. Uh, then you, know. you could, you could also have that online so that people can read it mm -hmm. you know, yeah, whenever they wanted yeah. to you know I think I think that's a great idea to have that and so is y your plan to have the first ceremony August 7th is a Sunday would that be the day that you'd be planning to well have we, we talked about that and I was talking to the major about it and, and I like I said to him I said we're people are away all the time for our vacations and we're still tracking down these people um, the relatives um, so I was thinking more toward the like early fall, because um, then people are back into the swing of school. Maybe somewhere around Veterans Day. Huh? Maybe somewhere around Veterans Day. Well, we can even do. We could do around Veterans Day. Day. Yeah. But if this gets passed, which it sounds like it is, and we do the proclamation, you could at least do the lighting and yeah, get and the we flag. Do that. And oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You want to do the lighting? Do, yes. do that on the day. Yeah, that's a support. Absolutely. I think that would be. But you, know, you also have a Veterans Month. Right, for November. So, so that would actually be, be a, a really good call on that. Um, yeah. 
Um, the, uh, I know that once, if you all decide to sign, that then from here, then I send it over to the major and then he gets it put online. But he said you're not mandated to, to have the ceremony like within a week after that or whatever. Mm. You know, no, I think the time was a little too to aggressive you. probably based on the yeah. timing right now. But again, we have plenty of time to plan for it exactly. in November. I think that would be appropriate too. I agree. All right, so what do we have a motion? Uh, we do. Uh, Madam Chair, I move to proclaim that the town of North Reading is a Purple Heart community <coughs> and to read the proclamation. Yeah, yeah. Read the proclamation. Motion by Mr. Walner, yeah. second by Mr. Mrs. Gonzalez. Mrs. Gonzalez, second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, so you gave us the proclamation, the Purple Heart community. Um, Whereas. So we, oh, okay. Oh, you're going to read it? I'm going to read it. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Carry on. I am going to read it. Yes. <laughs> you just, you just, we just voted unanimously to read it. Whereas the Purple Heart is the oldest military decoration still in present use, which was initially created as the badge of military merit, made of purple cloth in the shape of a heart with the word merit sewn upon it on August 7, 1782, in Newburgh, New York, by General George Washington, then reestablished as the Purple Heart on February 22, 1932, by General Douglas MacArthur, and whereas citizens of the North Reading community who through their acts of courage and bravery while engaged in enemy fire were killed in action and have been posthumously awarded the Purple Heart for their ultimate sacrifice. And whereas the town of North Reading and its community recognize our Purple Heart recipients who through their meritorious acts of courage and sacrifice fought battles to serve and protect this great nation and were wounded by enemy fire. And whereas we will continue to honor and respect our Purple Heart recipients and their families who have personal, intelligible knowledge the price paid to wear the Purple Heart. And whereas the town of North Reading will recognize Purple Heart Day annually on August 7th by illuminating structures with purple lighting and display of the American flag we encourage and urge citizens of North Reading to display the American flag and show other public expressions of recognition and appreciation of our Purple Heart recipients. And now, therefore, be it proclaimed, we, the Select Board of North Reading, do hereby proclaim North Reading a Purple Heart community. We will continue to honor the service and sacrifices of those from our community who were awarded the Purple Heart while serving in our nation's wars signed this 11th day of July 2022 by the members of the select board. Thank you, Mrs. Magna. We look forward to getting this moving along. Did you give me a copy of this one? Which one did you want us to The sign? one that's got all the names on it? Yes. There's two. Oh, there's two. Oh, okay. I just gave you another because I wasn't sure. It's the same one. All right. Okay, great. I mean, I probably know what it is. Okay. Everybody's names on it. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, I see. Okay. All right. Well, this is the second, third, fourth action item there. So you're already midway through what we need to do. So that's Yeah, they were pretty happy to hear that we had already because I wanted to kind of have things rolling for you to talk to the, to the folks. That's great. You know, so it was, that was important. And then I said, oh, get that done, get this done, get that done. You know, oh, go ahead. <laughs> And it, for us to know really how many of the Purple Heart recipients we have in our community, I think that's a, that right. would be great for, for you to come back and let us know that. I will. I will definitely do that. All right. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you so much, folks. I really appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rich. Thanks, Rich. Thank you, Sarah.
man of few words. <laughs> All right, we will move on to our next order of business, which is to review the revised approval not required plan for town on land, map A, parcel 196, 12 Audubon Road. Just keeps coming up every meeting. So yeah, because it had to go through the process <laughs> to get back yeah. to here. It will, it will continue to come up too. So what's the status? The board, after the board's approval, we met with the town planner and the building inspector uh, and identified that the, um, the plan that had been presented did not provide sufficient square footage for the lot proposed to be developed to be a developable house lot. So that in and of itself is an issue in terms of the map itself and the, the plan that you saw. The secondary issue is it was the opinion of the building inspector that the lot that is a currently privately owned to which the town land would be annexed is not a buildable lot at this point in time. So it was presented to us that it was a buildable lot. Turned out the, inspect the building inspector's uh, opinion um, was that it was not buildable. Um, so a revised plan is being worked on um, that will come back to the board. Um, and um, we thought we may have it for this evening. It's not quite ready yet, um, so it'll come back to us in the all right. So the we'll, we'll pass over that. Perfect. Moving along. Okay. Next order of business is the show cause hearing scheduled for Route 28 Lucky Mark. And do we have our, we have our attorney, do we have our licensee with us? Attorney representing yes, the licensee? Good evening. Could you please, I good evening. if you could identify yourself? Certainly, Attorney uh, David Westbron, 60 Andrews Street, 1 Massachusetts, uh, appearing on behalf of uh, Route 28, Lucky Mart. My uh, BBO number for the record is 657083. Um, first of all, that was a very passing few minutes with the Purple Heart. Uh, that was a nice presentation, too, and a worthy cause. Uh, I believe in Lynn, we're doing the same thing uh, as well. So, nice. for what that's worth. Um, I, be, before you uh, get into the actual uh, hearing, I have a suggestion that the board would entertain it. I can just wait. Oh, I'm, I'm always open to suggestions. I mean, <laughs> right? let, let's hear it. Yeah. So we'll make it like easier, I think. We, we, we also have it. Lieutenant. Romeo with joining no, us. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. I, I can't believe I did that. <laughs> but have you? You're the more handsome lieutenant here right now. Thibodeau. No. <laughs> I almost said Thibodeau. All right, I'm, I'm so sorry about that, Lieutenant Zimmerman. Okay. All right, let Thank Attorney you. Les Franz. I'm sorry. You, you, you wanted to make a suggestion as we proceed. So apologize for that. The suggestion is very simply, Mr. Patel is uh, selling his business um, and is moving out of the area to take other employment. Um, he realizes that he left uh, a, uh, an employee that was not, uh, he'll acknowledge that, um, did not do the right thing. Um, should have, uh, uh, the individual that came in on the uh, alcohol sting, um, should have been properly carded and was not. Uh, that's my understanding of it. Um, as a former chief of police myself in Massachusetts, those are very important things that the cities and towns uh, undertake, and I explain this to Mr. Patel. I also understand that Mr. Patel has prior uh, discipline. So uh, we will fall on the sword and accept uh, a suspension uh, and then, in the meantime, we will put uh, uh, put together a transfer through uh, Attorney Truex. Uh, and I'm not sure who the council is representing the proposed uh, new owner. But uh, we will accept a uh, suspension. We'll accept it immediately, um, effective, let's say Wednesday morning, at least so we can have a day to get uh, things covered up. And um, uh, I believe my notes uh, indicate there was uh, two prior suspensions, I believe. Three. Um, so, Three. Uh, Three. given all that. All right, we're not gonna, let's not talk over one another, but I'm gonna recognize everybody that wants to speak. 
and we're, we're going to consider your suggestion at this moment in time. It sounds like you're, you're asking for the license to be suspended so it will give him the opportunity to put together a sales transaction. Um, and, and I'm yes, not sure yes. what the board's pleasure is with regard to your request. Yes, so so we're, we're, we're going to need to discuss whether or not the board even wants to entertain that. So let's just okay. let's go to my colleagues. Mr. O'Leary. Well, do we want to hear the report or do we want to hear yeah, I, I, the report? Yeah, I'm going to just poll the members to see if we're going to proceed or we're going to even entertain that. Mr. O'Leary, do you want to proceed or do you want to entertain that? Right. Well, I think we should proceed and I can entertain that is a suggestion, but I think we just need to proceed with the, okay. with the show cause hearing. And, yes. And, Mr. And Walner? I guess I would just like, to, I guess the question I would be asking now or later is when is the, the sale supposed to transpire? How far away is so that? So you want to go along with the suggestion then? I just, with I that. just want to ask that one question. How far away is yeah. that transfer of the license? Uh, it has to, that would have to come the, before uh, us. Right. That transfer would have to come before us for approval. Okay, I thought we had heard about that before. Somehow I thought we had known about that before for some reason. So does, does the attorney have an answer to that um, question? When, when do you expect the transaction? Well, certainly. Certainly. The, the uh, negotiations are underway. A, uh, my understanding is the purchase and sale agreement has been uh, executed by the party. That's only a very preliminary non as you're aware, uh, outside of the, uh, uh, the license commission, this case the select board are not ready. Um, and then it's presented to, to various transfer forms of the town and ABCC approval. So that's kind of a long way off, but in the interim, that was the suggestion to take uh, the suspension with, with wave, uh, uh, if, if you give us a uh, suspension, we waive our right of appeal. We won't uh, cause any more expense to the town. Um, and Mr. Patel moves on with his life, and the town already moves on uh, with their life with a new owner of uh, the Route 28 Lucky Mark. Okay, so Mark. in other words, there's no set date for that. To, that's from all of that I'm gathering there is no set date for that's that to be before us Mrs. Gonzalez what's your pleasure okay. uh, want to move forward so with the show cause or do you want to move, forward, yeah. move forward Mr. Studo let's hear it yeah and I, I I don't think it matters what they're doing they Agreed. might not have a liquor license yeah. to sell after we hear what exactly. the evidence is yeah I agree Mr. Gilberto how many times have there been violations at this establishment uh, there are three that have been identified for which suspensions have been served over the and past four years and the suspensions, I believe, it, uh, were increasing three in days, amount. Three days, five days, and then 21 days. The last time we had this establishment before us was a 21-day suspension. Correct. And we're okay. back again on this fourth, this fourth show cause hearing. And when was the last? When was that last suspension? It was levied in January 2021. 25th. January 25th. 2021. Okay. Okay, so we're joined by our lieutenant. We're going to proceed with the show cause hearing. This meeting is being recorded. Okay. Just give us a second, Attorney Lesperos. Certainly. Oh, yeah. Okay. There we go. Okay, we're joined by our lieutenant from the police department to review the facts. You did receive, or your, your licensee did receive a notice letter of this hearing that was going to be conducted, this show cause hearing. Correct? Miss Attorney Lesperance, your, your licensee... I'm sorry. Go ahead, please. Your licensee did receive a, a notice uh, to appear at this hearing. For show cause. That's correct. And okay. I believe he is here on uh, Zoom with me. Okay, he's with you on Zoom. All right. Under the 201 number, you'll see. Where's that? Okay. So, Lieutenant Zimmerman. Madam Chair, he's not showing up here, but for some reason the feature is not putting up anybody without video. Okay. But he is showing up here. All right, so that's if he fine. If raise his hand, I'll see him. 
Sure. Well, well, we just want to make n a note of the record that mm -hmm. he, he is, the licensee is actually here <coughs> joining us by phone and his counsel is here. And we have Lieutenant Zimmerman to, to be able to present on behalf of um, the, the police department. So if you could please Thank proceed. You, Over the past few months, as part of our ongoing efforts to reduce the availability of alcohol and prevent underage drinking in our community, we've conducted alcohol compliance checks at businesses licensed to sell alcohol. Our department conducts these checks following the Massachusetts Alcohol Beverage Commission guidelines. As part of those guidelines, we advertised in the North Reading transcript on April 21st, 2022, on the North Reading patch, May 4th, 2022, as well as North Reading Police Department website and our social media outlets. On June 1st, 2022, North Reading detectives, with the assistance of a 20-year-old, conducted alcohol compliance checks at various alcohol vendors in North Reading. An operations briefing was conducted. Instructions were given to the participants on how the compliance checks would be conducted. State identification cards, license, were confiscated from the underage persons. All personal belongings were left at the police station with the only exception of their cell phones. As part of the alcohol compliance guidelines, the underage person was given a breathalyzer test, which was documented, and the result of the underage person shown a 0.00 blood alcohol content. The following instructions were given to the underage person regarding how to perform the alcohol compliance checks. The underage person was to enter the designated alcohol vendor and select a six pack of Bud Light beer or light beer. The six pack is then brought to the register and the underage person is to pay for the beer without providing a state identification <coughs> card or license. If a state identification card license was requested by a cashier clerk, they would state they did not have one with them, and if the service was still not provided, they would leave the premises. The underage person is not to provide false information to employees, such as portraying themselves as 21 or older. If they were sold an alcoholic beverage, they would make a mental note of who the cashier or clerk was. They then would exit the store and notify the detectives. On June 1, 2022, at approximately 4.53 p.m., Detectives and the underage assistant arrived at Lucky Mark Community School located at 202 North Street. The underage operated, operative entered Lucky Mark upon arrival and at 4.56 p.m. exited the store carrying a six-pack of Bud Light beer. Detectives Peter DePietro and Paul Lucci met with the underage operative. The following is a summary of what they told them. He entered Lucky Mark and selected a six-pack of Bud Light from the cooler. He proceeded to the register and paid for the six-pack. The cashier never requested his identification. He exited the store and walked directly over to De Detective Lucci and Detective DePietro. He described the person who sold him the six-pack as an Indian male with facial hair. Detectives then entered Lucky Mott, identified themselves, and spoke with the cashier, who was identified as Bajal Patel. Mr. Patel was the only employee in the store. The detectives informed Mr. Patel that they were conducting alcohol compliance checks and he had just sold to an underage person. Detective DePietro showed Mr. Patel the six pack of Bud Light and he acknowledged what they told him and only added that he IDs everyone but just forgot. Detectives verified that Mr. Patel is a responsible alcohol server trained tips and that his training is up to date. Prior to leaving, a violation notice was issued to Mr. Patel and, was, and he was advised he may be subject to criminal charges. Gotcha. Thank you. Okay. Does anybody have any further questions? Seems to be a rather straightforward fact pattern. Attorney Lesperance, do you have any questions for <coughs> Lieutenant Zimmerman? I, I do not. Anything else to offer in regard to the licensee's response, defense, or anything in regard to the fact pattern? Well, the only thing I would say is uh, we made a uh, we made an initial offer. Uh, as I said, um, if you're going to take action outside of that, that uh, we we would reserve our appellate rights. Okay. Um, and Mr. Gilberto, do you have the record of the prior the basis for the prior disciplinary? So the prior three suspensions were all due to sale of alcohol to a minor, um, all as part of a, uh, an operation run by the North Reading Police Department. 
um, <coughs> in chronological order? Well, so it's the same offense over and over again. Yeah, what so years were they? Sure. Uh, so there was a, an offense um, for which a hearing was held in July of 2019, resulting in a three-day suspension. Another offense for which a hearing was held in December of 2020, resulting in a five-day suspension. And then there was another instance shortly thereafter for which a hearing was held on January 21st, 2021, resulting in a 21-day suspension. Okay, uh, so at least the spread between violations is getting a little further. So, so, um, so where the facts aren't, you know, where the facts aren't really, you know, contested here. I mean, obviously that would be the, the findings of fact that we would make as a board. We don't need to reiterate what the summary that's been presented. Um, uh, like to have some discussion by the board on, you know, what disciplinary action you'd like to take, if anyone has anything to offer on in that regard. Mr. O'Leary. My suggestion would be that uh, it, it appears as though the uh, transaction is close at hand in relation to uh, transferring ownership of the business, and I would assume, based upon the attorney's comments, that uh, the ability to transfer this this uh, license uh, is one of the contingencies uh, on the sale. I certainly don't know how to inhibit um, another future owner having the opportunity to to have the license. But obviously, the uh, the current holder of the license has not proven themselves to be um, capable of. Oh, handling it properly. So my suggestion would be that we uh, suspend the license in effective Wednesday, 713, until the transfer of the license is approved by the local licensing authority, the select board, and approved by other state regulatory authorities. So basically not allowing the current holder to operate. And if he doesn't transfer it, he doesn't get it. <laughs> he doesn't get to operate. And it would help facilitate the sale of the uh, of the business and uh, get some new owners in there and allow them to uh, have the opportunity to continue on as a convenient smart and handle it appropriately but that would be my suggestion Otherwise, i can't pick a day because we don't know what the transactions are going to be but what we can do is basically uh, not allow the current holder of the license to operate it okay yeah. Any other comment? This, it, you, are you making right. the motion or are you just throwing that? I'm throwing that, that out and be happy to yeah, make it to as discuss. a, make it as right. a motion, but that's my suggestion. We've got hands raised, so Mrs. Mm -hmm. Gonzalez. Um, so I, I like the idea of that, that, that it's a suspension for good for them. They never get to use right. it again. Uh, my question is, if we revoke the license, uh, can, then, can somebody new coming in there come and apply for it? Does, what happens to it if it gets revoked? Does it just go up for grabs to anybody? No. No. Man, what no, is that no. process? No. It, it would require, uh, it would, there would be, would not be permitted to apply at that particular premises for a period of time. Oh, I'm not aware of that restriction, Madam Chair, yeah. so you'll have to enlighten right. <laughs> And then if it's revoked right. and the licensee's attorney said they'll appeal that, that would go through a hearing process, too, by the ABCC. So, Finn. But may I be heard on that briefly? Sure. Thank you very much. <laughs> the the uh, problem with uh, transferring a... Uh, any sort of alcohol uh, issued license is it cannot be under current discipline. So if you gave it a date certain for discipline, um, perhaps we could do uh, uh, a date certain, uh, and that way the transfer can go through. They can't transfer a license that's currently suspended uh, or under discipline, open discipline. So you'd have to close the disciplinary hearing for the transaction to go through 
um, and hence the suggestion of 20 days or 30 days. Um, yeah, I, I, I also know that you don't meet until August. Uh, I think there's one meeting in August. So this could uh, likely not get on the uh, your agenda until uh, uh, September, hopefully sooner, but uh, by the August uh, uh, meeting. But that's really uh, uh, putting under the gun with the uh, suspension and the uh, paperwork that needs to be uh, processed. Yeah, okay, we we need to get back to our discussion on how to address the violations at this point. I think we're getting way off the beaten track with what you are throwing out as a suggestion to assist him with the sale transaction. I, I just we need to get back to a discussion among our colleagues okay. at this point. So, Mrs. Gonzalez, did that answer your question? You're you're asking about a revocation versus I want to know a suspension. what happens to the license if it's revoked. What it, is the process, Mr. Gilberto? So the part that I'm familiar with is there is a right of appeal, as the chair was indicating. There's a certain number of days to which a licensee can appeal to the Alcoholic Beverage Control Commission, and then it's taken under their purview, and we're at the will of their timeline at that point in time. So there would be a hearing that would need to take place. They would need time to issue a decision, and all while that's happening, the license is not available. It's revoked. Yeah, but it, it doesn't revoked. operate. No, it's not revoked until the ABCC it's, adjudicates. It's revoked, and the ABCC appeal does not stay the board's revocation. It remains in that pattern until the ABCC adjudicates it, and then whatever happens after that. So, so in other words, it doesn't operate as a stay of what this board effectuates for a disciplinary action. Madam Chair, through you, and it cannot be reissued until that process has been adjudicated. Correct. Yes. Yeah. And in the meantime, they would not be able to use it. Correct. It has to be turned over in a revocation. Right. Could I just ask another question of the attorney, uh, maybe his client? Certainly. What, uh, what do you anticipate a more definitive timeline in relation to the, the Purchase and sale agreement. I had other hands up, so I don't want us to get se segued into that when other people wanted to discuss your suggestion. So, Mr. Studo? So, it seems to me that revocation of the, I mean, at this point, it's a moot point because the person's selling. Not a moot point at all. Well, hold on, though, but does anyone, but what you can't get away with, you know, like everything else, I've said this about a hundred times for a hundred things, people learn their lesson when they lose money. What is our, or what do we have to do? Do we have to uh, bring this up to the ABCC? How do we, how do we impose a monetary fine? Not, you can't sell Bud Light, monetary fine, and a substantial one. And who do we have to go to where it's like now, Go ahead and sell it because on the way out, you know. We're the we're the but is there licensing authority. We follow what the law requires. But that's my us. question. I don't know the answer. If is a licensee isn't following their legal obligation mm -hmm. and they're selling to a minor, we are then obligated, if we want to, to engage in this show cause hearing. We can suspend. We can revoke we can roll back hours. We cannot impose a fine. Who can? So that means in Massachusetts, the worst that could happen for selling to a minor is you can't sell anymore, but... The, the ABCC has, can, a, has a regulation with... The, you can revoke the license is the worst thing but, that could happen, right, and he'll right. sell a business but without a liquor license. But the ABCC can impose a fine in lieu of suspension. They, they, they've done that. That's part of their... Regulatory it's actually, it's a little suspension, not, rec not revocation, it's yes. suspension. Right. Okay. And to your, to anyone's background, because well, I don't we, know we it. We can't impose a we, fine. We can't, but can we refer it to someone that can? No, it's our job here to take action in this year. No, can we take action and refer it? No. Yeah. Yeah, no. I, I, have, I have some experience in this, a couple of fields. One sitting here and one being a former state auditor where I used to audit the ABCC. So I have a, somewhat of an understanding. Um, if we suspend the license and the license holder doesn't agree with our suspension, they get to appeal to the ABCC. 
The ABCC will then say, okay, is that reasonable suspension? And they'll either uphold the local licensing authorities, the board's authority to do so, or they can modify it, or they can allow them to do a payment in lieu of suspension. All right, so, so the ABCC can levy a fine in lieu of suspension, but while it's suspended, they still operate as they're appealing it. If it's revoked, that's a different story. Revocation is a revocation. They can only, it's revoked, and then they have to appeal that, and ABCC says that was a reasonable approach or it wasn't. Uh, so that monetarily affects it. But once well, it's revoked, if we revoke it, it can't be transferred until it's adjudicated right. at the ABCC level. And then it comes back to the town? And then the license down. then becomes available. Available. Again. Through us. Through us. Mm -hmm. In, in another location, though. right? So, Mr. Wong, you got your hand. Yeah. Raised. So, just ignore their transferring the what transferring over their business right. and everything else like that. If this was anybody else coming to us after their third violation, would revocation of their license be the next step? Would that be Would that be the normal? I mean, I don't see any pattern of that in here because I don't think we've had that many violations. But um, I, this revoke would, would that be our normal natural next step? Mr. Lear, have we ever had, in my time, I haven't seen the same violation year after year after year for the same sting that's advertised. So I no, can't I, answer I don't that. No, I don't ever recall sitting here and revoking a license. It's Again, astounding to me. There have been transactions be similar to this yeah. where it's been transferred. I think one of the only other important things to recognize is that, you know, we have a, uh, a tenant. This, this person does not own the, the land. You have a landlord that owns the building. And there's a certain value associated with, you know, the sure. establishments that's there and what they can transact in the way of business. And, you know, that's a, another individual who's been harmed along with the community as a whole in relation to the, the bad behavior here. You know, so it's just a question of, you know, do we want to preclude a revocation of a license at this particular location because of the action of this individual who's getting out of the business anyway and harm the landlord? Or do we want to, again, my the original suggestion was, you know, until it's transferred. No, I but if, it, if we can't do that, and they need a date certain, you know, they'll say, okay, September 1st. I just want to be sure, getting back to my question. Yeah. Will the transaction transpire before September 1st? You know, yeah. It's 31st. clear that he doesn't have a set date. He doesn't have an answer. He already yeah. answered that question. Well, yeah. I'm sorry. No. And, and, so, the other, and the other thing is, we're not, we, this isn't, we're not here because we're harming a landlord. Right. I, that, I know, but I, it I, probably I'm has gonna, nothing to do. He's still going to have to pay his rent and his lease that business is still existing. It just doesn't get to sell unless they light shut, liquor unless they, if we revoke it. Right. Or, they, or they shut down. They shut down and then the landlord's out. And, well, and then if what you're saying, and I'm not Yeah, that's I'm not, not the facts you, that But if you're saying that, us, that another though. license can't be issued at the same address right. because there was a right. revocation. A liquor license. But that yeah. doesn't mean a business can't operate there. Well, this isn't a true liquor license. This is a, this is a beer and wine Come a vigilance license. It's not serving alcohol, they're selling. It's a come a vigilance license. So I don't know if the, again, it, to the attorney, it's I'm a not, retail liquor license. Yeah, so, it, so if that's the case, then yeah, I think we should be cognizant of the effect and impact on the landlord who isn't here either. It may, probably isn't aware of that either. Well, it should be. Yeah, the landlord no, probably be. wants them, probably doesn't want them yeah. there. Uh, if that's how they're going to operate. Mrs. Gonzalez. I just uh, want to refresh, refresh my recollection of the past violation, the one before this, where I believe um, the, I don't know if it was the, whoever it was that sold the alcohol actually lied. There was, a, there was some lying that went on in that situation, if I remember correctly. So there was a lack of clarity with regard to lack whether the person was an employee or not. Um, no, no, that was the other one. That was New England. Do I have that? That was New England members. That wasn't That's what this, I, this, I this one here, no, the last go around. Yeah. Uh, if you call a former member of the board, uh, Delaney represented the, the individual here. Yeah. Um, yeah. And they came in and went, mea culpa, guilty. You know, they, they did, there wasn't any, the, the miscommunication as to who was serving and whether they employed or not was it. Uh, the other no, that was the first one you're talking that about. That was the, on the other second. On the second violation, though, it was the one where there was some. Didn't he? Yeah. Didn't yeah. He twisted lied. way where the owner yes. was like, "Have you know?" He was in the back, well, like, you know, looking the at the birds and the yes. other. Yeah, that was yeah. <laughs> so my point is, 
I don't trust that, I mean, they can say anything they want or we're selling it. We suspend it to a certain date and then, oh, geez, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sell it. And now he's back in business. I, I don't trust him. No, I, don't, I, I, don't, I don't trust him. Uh, it can happen. What can we do about it if it does? Yeah. I mean, we well, also. We can enter into some sort of an agreement. Attorney Lesperance. Will, uh, Attorney Lesperance. We need to yes. just take the opportunity to deliberate without any interruption. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought, I thought that was a question to me. My fault, Judge. So my personal feeling on this is that I don't want this person to hold that liquor license ever again. So whatever it is for me, whatever it is that has to happen, I don't trust that it could it, it would positively get sold. So um, for me, I would want to revoke it personally. Okay. Um, any other input? You want to give any other? Yeah, input? I think I meant to revoke. Mr. Studo, oh. any other input? I, I've been trying to think of a way around not affecting. I'm thinking more about the next business owner. I know I shouldn't, right? So I'll say that because, but I'm thinking about. It's. I'm thinking. I'm thinking about how this fits in the bigger picture of a lot of things. But, so. I'm open to suggestions how to. Pretty much, I, I, I'm in agreement that there should not be another alcoholic beverage sold there by the current owner, right, that. So how do we thread the line where we punish the outgoing but not the incoming? Yeah. Because that, you that's- You are thinking more about the business than I'm not the thinking about the business. Owner. I'm thinking, I'm not thinking nice, about- Which is nice, I'm not thinking <laughs> about the business or the owner. I'm yeah. thinking about though that it's something where totally raising the license to the ground for anyone going forward does a disservice to, to, to us, to not, the community. Not, it's not to really, it, 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 was, it, was a, it wasn't it was a, before this owner, it, was a, it didn't have a liquor license. That's not this true. Is the first, this is the first, this is the first license that's Absolutely been there. Absolutely not. Yeah, we granted a license there as a board. Since that building was built, it was a little peach it had a beer and wine license, probably 35 years ago when the building was built. It's been a convenience store for its entire history. So and it's, it's always had a, had and it's a, had a beer and wine license there, yeah. and it's been transferred from owner to right. owner. It was Pe right. Little Peach, it was Tedeschi's, uh, it was something else in between, and now it's, it's lucky and, and I it's recall unlucky when mark. that was sold, mm -hmm. because when we had the, when we heard the application for that location, they were restricted in the convenience store. They could not be a convenience store because of across the way. Right, I remember that. Yeah. I wasn't on the board, but I remember it. Yeah, they were not allowed to maintain their use as a convenience store. Right. So they went off into these other. That was that was because of the Tedeschi thing. Yeah. Because Tedeschi bought 7-Eleven. Right, but it's and a that was, restriction. That was a franchise the problem there. That that was, was a franchise was, issue. It yeah. wasn't a local licensing issue. Yeah, but it, I recall it's a restriction. And so no matter what goes So there, they were they're restricted, restricted as to what they could have in their shelves. For convenience store. Yeah. But it's it, still, if you've been in there, it's still a convenience store. Yeah. But so. Manager, if but we can find a way to do what we all want to do, which is make sure that the current owner, right, cannot sell any more alcohol. Or any friend or any family member. Correct. Which, <laughs> that's the other thing, too. Yeah, I mean, can I ask a quick question before I continue my statement to the attorney? I to the to his attorney. Do you do you can you continue your thought to the board? Because First, okay, the, I, all right. The, then the board then. Because I want to have some input too on. But to this. piggyback what Mrs. Gonzalez yeah. said, that as long as this not an end around out of like you know somebody very closely connecting getting the business, which then at that point I it will be very disingenuous. I do think that. That's why I was looking at the money. Punish this person, right? But don't, let's just do it in a way where we don't twist ourselves in a pretzel where three months from now, we're trying to figure out how to circumvent whatever mass general law I don't know about yet to try to get a liquor license back there. 
But Mr. Studo, the, the next application, if there is actually a transfer application, which we haven't seen yet, so mm -hmm. we can you know take that for what it's worth, we would be reviewing it. It's our job as the licensing authority to investigate and review it. So we would already have that information and make a decision. We don't have to grant a transfer if we don't think it's appropriate. If no, we don't but if think we the revoke, person is of good character. But it seems here that if we revoke, we don't even have that option. Correct. So Unless that's what the I'm, ABCC. But that's what I'm saying revert. is that I I I, I just. In general, I don't like absolutes because then if there's a, it, it becomes a one-way street. If we do revoke, we, we already, I mean, it, I, I, then we're just going to be stuck with this guy selling tobacco and uh, Tootsie Rolls because no one's going to buy that place. No, he has a pretty good lottery business in there, too. Hey, so. The else? only other thought in terms of we have, we have one suggestion to... Surrender, uh, not surrender, but that would be the suggestion. Would be the surrender, with a written agreement by the uh, licensee. No sales. No. No alcohol is even shelved there. Surrender the license until that, you know, application is before us. With the understanding, potential. We're not, we don't make any promises on what we're going to do because we're we're going to be reviewing that but surrender it right mr gilberto has that ever been done before i know we're in a stance where we've never had this repeated same yeah. exact violation no in, in my tenure it is not um but I, I would i would imagine that if the license is surrendered and that that if that is the resolution to the discipline it would no longer be transferable if it's surrendered with a date certain that we impose for receipt of a transfer application, that could be the only way that I could see that because it doesn't have suspended or revoked status. Mm -hmm. It's a voluntarily surrendered, right? Mm -hmm. I, have a I think that's a good idea. And, and, and then it's voluntarily surrendered and then a date certain imposed by us and then if, it, if the application, a completed application isn't filed by that date certain, you, the, the license is forfeited by the licensee. Might I suggest just continue right. on with your thought, Madam Chair? That's a great well, idea. It's it, willingly it, suspend a, surrender. Just, uh, surrender the license uh, to a continued date of this hearing, September, whatever our first meeting in September is. We haven't picked that yet, right? <laughs> so, oh, no, not yet. So we we pick that's on but agenda. if they surrender, surrender it until the continuation of this hearing on a specified date uh, occurs, we will continue the hearing. And I would imagine that we would have an application for a transfer in or between not. then. And if not, right. well, then we take final action. I think yeah. that's a good idea. Why, why wait for final action? Why not just sit, have the licensee? voluntarily agree to a forfeiture of the license. It's in our possession anyway. I have a, okay, I have a question about that, just to be clear in my mind. So if there is an available license, it's surrendered, it's revoked, and cleared through the ABC, the license come back to us. What happens then? Is that up for grabs for anybody who would like to have it? Or do we decide where it can go? Somebody has to apply for it? Somebody would need to Somebody apply. Somebody needs to So what if several people apply for the it? The board would need to consider the applications. Okay. I just and wanted to understand it, that it, it process. It could be at any locate, locate. It becomes available, available and anybody, anybody could apply for it. But um, I don't, I can't. I think we may have one available already, still. So somebody coming so into that, so somebody new coming oh, into there right. could come here and apply for a, a license. Would be. So, but it's, we're getting, we're really getting off the, off the track. I'm just, I'm looking to Mr. Gilberto's counsel on this because this isn't, this is, really isn't my original thought. So I, I'm looking for your counsel in regard to, first of all, I'm sure this has never been done, right? Not in my, not in my town, not, yeah. here or in other communities. But I also Pioneers. think, in, in my opinion, from, uh, from the facts and it's, it's, 
pretty astounding to me that we're back here yet again. It's like our annual disciplinary meeting with this licensee <laughs> over the same thing. So it's, I believe, irresponsible for us to not take some disciplinary measure on it. Because uh, we know what's happening there, and we don't know how often it's happening there, but this is an advertised sting operation that, that every year is advertised in. They're, they're still getting caught at the advertised one, so who knows what goes on on the non-advertised evening, so. Um, I have a question for Mrs. Gonzalez. I have a question for Lieutenant Zimmerman. Oh, okay. Can Go criminal ahead. charges be pressed against? Yeah, Somebody yeah, the, the criminal charges could be, uh, is an option for the person who uh, supplied the alcohol to a minor. Is a mass general law charge for. Um, is that up to us or up to? It would be up to the police department. Up to the police department. <laughs> but it's been a different person each time. Is this yeah. who who sold it this time? Was it the owner? Was it the operator of the business? The license holder? I don't think so. I don't no, know. I think it's, it's been an employee. It's an employee. Yeah. Yeah. Of the same name? Because <clears throat> yeah, if I recall, Ms. Gonzalez, the. the the second time, the one you're talking about, where the things yeah, got mixed yeah. up, it was that person who technically didn't work. He was just watching the front, and he wasn't yeah. tip certified. Right. And then the first time was someone different as well. The That's what I mean. So, exactly. but this person has the same last name, correct? As the license holder, is that it, it is not the same person in the three other incidences? Marmik Patel. Patel. In December of 2020. An assistant who was the individual. This was this was Bajad B I J A L Patel. Patel. They're all so are they all they're all related. Okay. No, but it's a common very it's common. It's a common name. Very common. It's very common. Could be related. But they're all in the <laughs> same <laughs> place. Yeah. I know, but they're all working in all this same Kendall. store. Uh, so yes. I'm assume right. I shouldn't assume mm -hmm. but that they're related. I don't know if we have that information yeah. from the report. I have a Ricky Patel identified as the owner, I believe is on the call here, both That's in this nice. call and at the previous 2020 incident. But did you, Lieutenant, did you, did they, they take the ID of the individual that sold? We, we have a, we have a copy of it. It's in the report. Yeah, it's in the, yeah. It's in the report. It's Marmon Patel. It's Excuse me. Marvin? No, it's not. I'm sorry. This is the way 20. B-I-J-A-L. So, um, again, I'm, I, yeah, so I see it. It's on page, page 89 of the, yes. oh, yeah, just mm -hmm. yeah. I think it's a good suggestion that it, that you made, Madam Chair, in relation to as an option for uh, the license holder. Would you like to um, surrender your license? Yeah, I think that those, those would those would be the the parameters. I would say that that otherwise, I'm in agreement with the majority that if someone makes a motion to revoke, yeah. I'm in agreement with that. But the 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 license holder would have to turn the license over. In, in this would have to be in writing. This would have to be an agreement in writing. And this is a concession to some, that's I think more significant discipline on the basis of the representation that he's selling the business. That you know, he, if, if he is actively selling that and he's interested in a transfer, the concession would be no more sales no more, voluntarily surrender it. You don't sell alcohol and we'll entertain a transfer no later than, did you say Sept our September said, yeah. meeting? September. Yeah. You know, a, a completed application no later than our September meeting. Failing that, you know, we'd, we, it would be forfeited, you know, uh, to lose a license <coughs> or, you know. Well, Something if they need it till October or something. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Attorney Les Browns. Thank you. I would just caution uh, to protect my uh, client's rights uh, using the terminology surrender. Um, I think 
maybe a better suggestion listening to the board and what's unfolded uh, here with this particular Mr. Patel uh, at that location. Uh, perhaps the board could give the authority to town administrator Mr. Gil Gilberto um, to an engage in agreement with, uh, with me on behalf of my client where my client does not does agree not to sell any more alcohol and the license will be held at town hall all alcohol will be removed from the store pending um, the uh, uh, finally an acceptance of a uh, transfer application but we can't do it a transfer if, it, if there's open discipline but we would voluntarily uh, discipline ourselves, I suppose. That's what it would be called voluntarily uh, uh, disciplining ourselves in order to effectuate the transfer. Um, with the agreement, he won't sell any more alcohol um, and uh, we'll uh, wait for the transfer to be approved. Yeah, we wouldn't be able to agree to a, wait to a transfer to be approved. You know that. That's kind of obvious. We would have to entertain an application. We can't make an agreement that says we're going to approve a transfer. We haven't even seen the no, application. No, no. It, you're right. You're right, Madam Chairman. Yeah, yeah. What I mean, what I'm meaning to say is, we could accomplish what everybody wants here. That this, my client, no longer sell alcohol, and uh, he'd be allowed to uh, exit uh, the town stage right with the with the uh, uh, you know an agreement. Uh, for the sale, we'll have a purchase and sale agreement in a transfer application uh, to town hall. I think it's ready to go uh, uh, from the other lawyer that's representing uh, my client on that end of it, the sale of the store. I think it's uh, ready to go. It would have been filed already, but for this uh, uh, disciplinary hearing. I got a shot to the motion. All right. You guys want to hear it? Well. <laughs> I, and then I can say it, and then I can get voted down, and then... Okay. You're going to make a motion? To speak. I'm let, gonna make let me just, let's to, just... I think that there was, he was trying to do an agreement instead. No. If it's at all related to this, I think we need to, we're, we're talking, we're, we're, we're actually trying to, I think we're, I think we need to, firm up if this is even an avenue that, yeah. that the majority of <laughs> Mr. Walker. Okay, I asked the question originally, when's the purchase and sale going to happen? I and I got a vague answer. And now suddenly I'm getting an answer saying that up. it's about ready to be <laughs> wrapped up. I've, I've actually have heard enough. This should be a revocation. It's their problem after this. And if the landlord needs their money, go sue them because that's what you do if people don't pay their rent. I mean, I just no, think. No, I'm not talking about paying rent. I'm talking about having another tenant in there, having the ability to, to to run a similar business. Well, you just said there's another I, license I, they can I just think for. that, I mean, we're, we're, but not if you, now we're getting, play. I feel like we're getting. said, it's the location. Revocation right. takes place in the location. It can't go back to that location, regardless yeah. of the outlet. Can we add a B to the number? I don't know. Okay. The I don't know. Can we add a B? I don't know. If they're like 100 Main Street, you're going to call them B? Because no. she's a city no. attorney. So, yeah. you know, uh, no. so if that's the case, I think that's, okay. That's unfair to the landlord. It's unfair to any future applicant. And again, the we location is well suited there. for what it what it does. It's Instead of a packy. I'm just using right. my hand. Hold on a, a second, because Mr. Gilberto and Mr. Studer want to have get some input here. Where and we need really need to we really need to zone in here. We need to focus in on what we're going to do here because yeah. we're we're we five different opinions. Yeah, we here. don't want the opinions. Mr. Studer. So I I have a question to. The three that are looking at a rubric. Just yeah. a question. Try, try to change my mind. What do we get out of impeding the next person? Meaning, because Mr. Patel may still be gone, but what do we get? From what I understand, to answer your question, is that if another person wants to come in here and wants a liquor license, they can come before us and apply for it. Not at that location. Not if you written, not if you revoke. Yeah. According to what the chair said. Madam Chair, is that true? A whole completely different person can't come in here and apply for a liquor it's, license. It's the address issue. It's an address issue, and yes. So we don't have another packy in town. I'm not broken hearted. No. So again, uh, there's plenty of places to are, go. I. <laughs> I think we're getting wayward in terms of what we're addressing here. Yeah, I'm not here. worried about it. 
what we're addressing here is the violation. So we're talking about a landlord, another business. What we're yeah. directed to do under the law is focus in on this violation. How do we want to address it? And of course, the licensee's attorney made a proposal when we began. So we, we're shifted off of the focus of how are we going to address this revocation? Yeah. And of course, there's valid points that have been made to address that. And, and I do think we're, one. We're not here to harm a landlord, so we're getting way off. I'm not the talking track. about the landlord. Yeah. I'm just saying one does. I don't want to even call it a cause and effect because I agree with you. We should just be speaking about the merits of this. Mm -hmm. My bigger issue is, though, because of this address thing, which I just learned tonight, right. right, that is my thing that I am knowingly going to revoke a license and pretty much kill an address. Also, another question I have, what happens if 10 years from now, somebody buys that location, raises the building, builds a new one, but still the same address, wants to open a restaurant. Now, I can't get a license because 11 years ago, Patel sold Bud Light to a kid four times. No, but if that's realistic, you have to look at it like that because that's realistic. Because I can tell you, you will poison that address. Is it a permanent Somebody tell me, is it a permanent All right, let me just read you the law. That's okay. Yeah, I want to know if that's actual that my, doesn't make my, sense and michael i mean attorney attorney uh, mr gilberto and to my colleagues section 64 it talks about the the disciplinary authority of the board and it is saying that it's it, it is saying that um i'm sorry i just had it <coughs> If the license, if you can see in the first paragraph, section 64, give, to give notice that the, the, the reasonable opportunity to be heard may modify, suspend, revoke, or cancel his license upon satisfactory proof he has violated or permitted a violation of any condition or any law of the Commonwealth. If at any hearing license he is charged with serving or selling alcohol or alcoholic beverages to a person under 21 years of age, written notice, selling or service, written notice shall be sent to the parent or guardian of such person, which obviously doesn't count in a sting. If the license is revoked, the licensee shall be disqualified to receive a license for one year after the expiration of the term of the license so revoked. And if he is the owner of the premises described in such revoked He's license, not. no license shall be issued to be exercised on said premises for the residue of the term thereof. So but that answers. The owner. I'm sorry? That answers, I think, your question because he's leasing it. This right. licensee is leasing it. He's so not, it doesn't affect the, the address. address. Not the but the owner of equity is. So, yeah. Madam Chair, your, you, so your reading of that, yeah. if you can help me here, if we revoke his license and then someone else reopens the establishment, does that individual, since it's not the same individual, have the ability to come in here and apply for a license? Yeah, Immediately. Said. That's what I'm. Yeah, that's, what it's, it's it only that's okay, how so, it I mean, reads. The, the one year limitation on the current licensee exactly. is a one year limitation. On that. So yeah. you know, he can come back after. So if he, he does, so he can come back it, after a year. If he owned the premises, it yeah. would be on the premises. Right, that's on the premises, but he doesn't. Right. But he doesn't. So that takes that out of the equation. Can we do? Can I make a suggestion? And not to drag this out, but. Can we get a confirmation? I'm not saying you're. Yeah, of course. If we get a, but if we can get a confirmation on that by. I don't know if we can do that this evening, and we really do need to take an action on this because we're not. I, I, well, I'm I have a suggestion, a and I don't know if uh, the attorney uh, for the uh, you know licensee is open to this, but okay, seeing that we're trying to work with you here. 
Would you be open to? Would you be open to if we can pull off however we have to word it for no alcohol sales till our August meeting, so we get clarification for this and we can do the right thing by everybody. I, I, if no alcohol sales until uh, August uh, selectman's meeting, we'd agree to that, and in the interim, that would give us plenty of time to get a transfer application in before you. Now August, <laughs> you're moving so, quick. Uh, Vincenzo, yeah. are you making a motion? No, I'm just yeah. first. I think, first, I just I think wanted you to hear to that. Throw your but now, but now I'm going to ask that. this before I make the motion. Would the board? How do you always say it? Is it the board's pleasure to allow for, to get an answer on this? Because that would change my mind. I'll be honest, I'll be the first one. She if just it read it. it. But hold on, but if we get a confirmation. Right, I'm not your lawyer. Yeah, if we get a confirmation that that's the fact, revoke will work because then I know we're not penalizing anyone else after. But is the board, and we can hear everybody's opinion, open to Okay, so Mr. Yeah. Mr. Studo wants me to poll the members. Please. Are you open to doing this new arrangement? And I, I would be in favor of, of, of continuing this hearing until our August 8th meeting and have the voluntary surrendering of the license to the town administrator in the interim. Mr. Mr. Uh, Walner, Don't you're agree. still on revoke. I'm still on revoke. Mrs. Gonzalez, I'm on revoke. you're still on revoke. Mr. Studo? I, I, I you made, the made that suggestion. I'm total in total disagreement with the both of you, and I would also say to uh, Mr. Lesperance, your your licensee is with you on this hearing, and I, I think it's a massive concession that the the board offered, in terms of this being the fourth pretty significant violation, the last the third one of which he was suspended 21 days and that really had no effect because we're back here again yeah. so if uh, there's any concession to be made there appears to be and I don't know if this is a consensus but there appears to be a uh, potential for your client to voluntarily turn the license in and by a date certain submit an application and in the meantime there's no alcohol sales there. Alcohol gets comes off the shelves, doesn't get given away because that's against the law, doesn't get sold it, it to anyone because that would be against the agreement. And until such time as, a, as there is a decision, determination made on an application. And, you know, that, that's, if he's getting out of town anyway, who's manning the shop while he's not there? Because you said he's exiting stage right anyway, which is another flag we haven't even discussed as a board. But, you know, he's the manager, so where is he going while this, you know, is still going on? So that would, that would, be, that would be my only concession. And if that's not agreeable, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm in line with my colleagues on a revocation, I think. And let me make one last point, though. Please. Yes, well, Mr. Walner had his hand okay. up. Let him make a point, then you can make the last point. The, the concession, any concessions we make allows the current owner to get a better price for his business than he would get if his license is revoked. So any concession we make is going to put more money in his pocket so he can leave town with more money. It's not his business. It is his business. It's his business. Yes, yes, it is. It's his business. I think it has been proven that uh, it's personal property. No, the okay. We're getting into something <laughs> where if he's able to sell a business with the potential to transfer a liquor license, is what Mr. Walton is saying. Oh, okay. We can't keep going that. back and forth value. like this either. Right. So. That's why it should just be removed. No, but the applicant, I'm not, I'm but not the applicant has to be acceptable to the board too. You know, yeah. So yeah, that's absolutely. that's why I get right. the sales going to be yeah. contingent upon. Right. Usually uh, in that type of a transaction, if there is a liquor license to be sold, it's part of like goodwill, you know, yeah. and other. It's not considered uh, a piece of a personal property of the license holder, but it is considered a saleable asset. That's typically yeah. what yeah. you see in a purchase and sale. So as soon as, as soon as you take away the license, the price goes down. Or, or it's it's not an asset that a buyer would be buying well, buyer if it's if it's taken away. <coughs> so, 
and also that's like Mr. O'Leary just mentioned usually the sale if there is a liquor license is contingent upon the a license being approved yeah approved so. and transferred through the state yeah. so what difference does it make if they have if they come in here and apply for a license well, I await instructions from the board. Uh, that's agreeable to us. All right. Well, Mr. Mr. Stewart's going to speak, and then we're going to let you. We should let the poor lieutenant so leave. I, don't I, know I just want to say, too, that <laughs> if you rewind the tape, I think in most matters, especially with second and third offenses, I've been the strongest to try to inflict maximum punishment and then when we start picking the dates, I look at the calendar and try to always look at what the maximum loss would be. So just in case, I want to get that out there. However, like a lot of things in this life, I am not in favor of punishing someone new who's not even here yet for somebody else's prior bad acts, which is a narrative, not just here, that gets thrown around a lot. And that's what we'd be doing here. Because we find out later, after we vote in haste, to revoke, that somebody 10 years down the line can't have it, it's a poison pill. And so then, and then, you're, and no, without getting prior, because I think if KP Law came in here right now and said, hey guys, you can do whatever you want, one that doesn't affect the other, but you do this, and 101 Main Street or whatever the address is will never sell booze again, I think opinions would be changed. Yeah, okay. So, Chair, but, no, 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 hold on, Rich, that's not fair. I did you said M that's fair. Mr. Studo. But he said Mr. that doesn't make Studo any sense. Through the chair. Okay, not Madam across Chair, the but table. through you. What I'm trying to say is that I agree with you, Rich. It does not make any sense. However, what if an attorney came in and said that? Would it change your opinion? I heard what she said. I no, 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 no. <laughs> she said it's, she's not our attorney, and <laughs> somebody else has to tell us. No. That's what she said. So, so I'm going to make a so motion you, to revoke. Yes. Yeah, so, so, so let's you let's explain? let's not do this, please, I please, agree. folks, please. Could, could I, I can recognize you all, and we can talk till the wee hours of the morning. <laughs> We've done it before. We can do it again. <laughs> please, let's just stay focused on the task at hand. If you want to be recognized, please just. Thank you, Mr. O'Leary. Raise your could, hand and I'll recognize Could you clarify you. for me what you were proposing as a... Middle ground. A middle ground so that I could so, embrace it? And I think that, and I, think that I, I do, do not, I think that Mr. Gilberto's more on top of this than I am, but I will say that, and again, I believe this is a massive concession to this license holder that who is exiting stage right so we allow that license holder if he doesn't like the term surrender he can turn the license in to mr gilberto with the understanding that there'll be no alcohol sales there no alcohol giveaway no alcohol even displayed it's got to be removed and that we're allowing this to allow him to put an an application for transfer in that we put in we impose a date certain on that it could be you know uh, I, whatever he august said 31st. august or september yeah, august 31st by the by august 31st to be here we'll put it on the next hearing and you know we're not going to make a promise of approval that's not going to be in that agreement no but, we don't expect that yeah but I'm stuck on what happens then if it doesn't get approved. Right. We still have the license, and I'd, I'd say he'd have to come back in. Well, that's know, a, that's why I suggested continuing okay. the hearing. You would have to continue okay. it. He voluntarily not sell any more alcohol and have the license present here rather than there. It has to be there in order to sell it. Right. And then we'll continue the hearing. We'll see what we get for Apple. And that's why I suggested whatever our September date was. That yes. Then everything's. Yeah. Okay. The Let calendar me just, works. Mrs. Gonzalez, because Mr. Gilberto did have his hand up okay. for a long time, his arm got tired, <laughs> <laughs> so he put it down. <laughs> and then we'll come to you. I just have a question because you said. Yep. Okay. Just a quick question. 
And you said you can't give the alcohol away and you can't sell the alcohol. So what are they supposed to do with the alcohol? Give it back to the distributor. Remove it from the shelves. So Where? To take go it home. The, the distributor will take it back. The distributor will take it back. The distributor will take it back. So how do we have proof of that? Are we going to know that that happened? Yeah, we can go in and look. Go in the store documents. and look. They will provide documents too. They can. They can provide a, 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 a bill of what that. was turned in. Yeah. And these are the types of inventory, things that our inventory. police department. Lieutenant Zimmerman can send they, Lieutenant they, Romeo they away to check it out. They pay attention to it. Yeah. <laughs> they pay attention. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Romeo. I'm sorry about that. I'm, I'm sorry, it's, it's late. You don't even look alike. Hey, great. <laughs> All right, <laughs> I feel so bad. M Mr. Um, Goberto, please. It might be minor, but going back about 30 minutes in the conversation, I had stated that we had uh, one available license. Uh, we do not have an available license in this category. For retail. For so there's probably retail. people chomping at the bit that would love mm -hmm. to apply for that. Th uh, there license. may be. There may be. Uh, yeah. I don't know that we've received a ton of inquiry. Um, for that well because there isn't one we just have to get back to the focus at hand folks yes. I'm really focus. we really Sorry, need sure. to be clear about we are not here to consider all those yes. other things right. we are here to consider what's before us which well, is the, di the discipline hearing that we're holding on this license for the specific violation that we serve notice on so we have to get back to that so mr. We're going to go Mr. O'Leary, then Mr. Walner. Mr. O'Leary. I would move to continue this hearing till September 12th, 8 p.m. Okay, Mr. O'Leary makes a motion. Second. To continue the hearing. Mr. Studo seconds it. Any further discussion? Just the discussion is, before I vote on this, the attorney, through the attorney, the applicant agrees tomorrow morning deliver the license to the town administrator's office and calls the distributor and empties the shelves no now you're amending your motion no 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 this is discussion okay it's all right so instruction for discussion. my motion's the same for discussion purposes we've we've lobbed that back and forth now i don't see any buy-in from the uh, from the licensee on that i would have to see that that's in a, in a written in a written we're at motion stage now I would have to see if, if I would even vote. I'm not yeah, in favor okay. of that, but if I okay. did vote in favor okay. of it, it would have to be a written agreement. All right, with okay. Yeah. All right, your motion is to continue the hearing until what? Monday, September 12th at 8 p.m. on the condition that the applicant, in writing, agree to voluntary delivery, voluntarily bring the license to the town administrator's office or the police department, what do we want it? Um, should come here. But we don't to the town administrator's to office, yeah. and no beer or wine will be sold until until the hearing is concluded. Second again. As long as my uh, client's rights are protected, they are still I don't protected. Have a problem with that at all? They're still protected. You just have to agree, agree and write yes, it. Yes, they are. The, the hearing is still open. Right. So. The hearing is still uh -huh. open. So they're still protected. Right. Okay. So we have a motion to keep the hear this disciplinary hearing open. It's seconded by Mr. Studo. I think we're going to go on a roll call for this one. Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. No. Nope. Mrs. Gonzalez. No. Mr. Studo. Yes. Mr. Manu Pelli is no. Okay. Help me, Madam Chair. I thought that was bringing you about just to what you were trying to bring about. That they bring it in what I was trying to bring about was the voluntary, voluntary surrender of the license with the written agreement by the licensee to voluntarily right. surrender it with the, under, with the agreement that there be no alcohol sales, alcohol will be removed with the agreement of the licensee in writing that the licensee will be submitting that application to us, a completed application to us for transfer of the license as was represented was gonna happen and that that be done by a date certain, then we can act on it. You oh. were trying to tag something different on that. Oh, I, I, I misunderstood. Every time we, you know, talk I, about it, I think- Madam we, Chair, I, I moved to 
continue the hearing until September 12th with those conditions. Okay. So we're, we're, then every time we do this, though, we're getting these, well, my clients' are rights are protected. I don't even know what that time. means. I'm not sure what that means. So we don't have a... a I have an obligation, but Madam Chair, obviously I have an obligation to protect my clients' rights uh, of appeal and what have you. So, so far there isn't anything I see that's going to change anything we've agreed to other than if it affects my client's rights ultimately. You mean in terms of right a... Now, and maybe perhaps a conversation to clarify this with the town administrator in the morning we can go back and forth and agree uh, in principle with uh, what the board uh, desires. Okay, so but when you say protect your client's rights, you mean in the event of uh, ultimate revocation or suspension that right. your client Correct. has a right of appeal? Well, not so much. Yes. Oh, you Correct. mean up, upon the contingency? Not so much suspension. Okay. Revocation. So upon the contingency that you know there's no app, no business app transfer of license application or sale of business, then we proceed further at the next hearing. Right. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. Thank right. you for indulging me uh, to the whole board and the town administrator as okay. well. Thank you. So, so but, we're but we are we are it. we are making this concessional motion based upon, uh, I guess, your representation on behalf of your client right. that your client, the licensee is, is going to be in agreement and executing a, a, a voluntary agreement and bring the license in tomorrow. And no more sales. We're 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 trying to help you out. Is is how I yes, would say. Yes, you are. Say. We appreciate that. So we appreciate that. And that this may not pass, but um, so Mr. Mr. So now, it's continues to September twelfth with your verbiage. Mr. Gilberto, please let Mr. Gilberto talk because he poor man's we had his hand up for thirty minutes while no. we <laughs> no. go back. Um, I'm just I'm not noticing that date that September 12th date may be problematic because we usually have to sign a warrant. So if we want to use a more reliable date in September, it would be the 26th. And we'll talk about oh, September 26th. Okay. The 26th. Yeah. yeah, it gives them more time to put together a deal. That's right. September 26th. But your client would be agreeable to bringing that license into the possession of the town administrator and agreeable Who to... Who can hold it in that pro? There's no more sale or giveaway there's no giveaway anyway it's against the law but no more sale of alcohol there all right that's agreeable with the one caveat that i, I just went through this in august with another client who got evicted um, and did uh, run into a little logistical trouble bring, uh, uh, returning the products uh, there were times that uh, because the delivery people couldn't do it, they had a special pickup crew. So I would only ask that the good lieutenant and the police department work with us and understand there'll be no more sales as of tomorrow morning. Uh, the signs will be taken down and the check will be empty uh, in accordance with the law. And my understanding of that law is it goes back to the distributors, but it may still be on the premises, it will not be sold awaiting pickup from the distributor the simplest way to that, that that's reasonable i mean that's like logistics okay now we have to vote on this motion <laughs> which it's way too late for me to repeat it i'll be honest with okay, you but, but you, you know what that, i know what you meant i'm not allowed to make a meant. motion though okay she's good so she we're gonna yeah that's what needs to be she also has a recorded that's good we're gonna submit that motion through mr o'leary can she reread that can you reread that no <laughs> So what I understand, I the motion is to, the <laughs> motion is to permit the, the motion is to continue this hearing to September 26th, permit the licensee to enter a written voluntary agreement, including turning over the license to the town administrator tomorrow morning. The licensee voluntarily agrees to no more sales of alcohol there pending the submission of a completed 
uh, okay. transfer application. And if no transfer application is submitted on or before, it has to be in before the hearing on the 26th so that it can be entertained, then we continue this disciplinary hearing on the 26th, but the license will be held by the town administrator until until that until then. So one way or the other, we're going to get a transfer application in to entertain, which we're not making any representations on, or we're going to get. Well, you can't. I understand that. Or I we're going that. to get a. Um, we're going to finish our disciplinary hearing on the 26th. Okay, thank you very much again. Well, we have we to take the vote. Voted yet. We yeah, have, we have to vote and where we have hands up. Okay, Mr. Studo. And in a, in a long worded way, this is what I was saying. It's that, and then on the 26th, if we don't like what we hear, because either the application's incomplete or the whatever, we can then, not only will we have the answer on from by then from KP of what that rule is, the clarification, but then we can have a revo party. Like, it'll be fine. We can still do it. So, and and I it. can say, based upon everything I've heard up to, to date, it would be my intention to vote to revoke on the 26th. So, what's more incentive to it's put a the massive, together? It's a massive concession while we're discussing this. Okay. It's yeah. a massive concession by the board. And we're, we're, we're infusing factors that are really driving our focus off of discipline. I think we're all in agreement the, the current license holder should not be selling alcohol any longer in North Okay. Yes. And we, I think we're all in agreement. I, I know we're all in agreement on that. I think it, some of the concern is that I have is for future applicant and the location of the landlord for okay. uh, being hard. Okay. All so right. I, think we, I think we can succeed. And again, we if an applicant comes before us that we're not satisfied with, then we're not That's satisfied with Okay. We do have to move forward yeah. on this. You mean so vote? So on that on that motion, do we have a second? Second. Motion by Mr. O'Leary, second by Mr. Studo. All in favor? Aye. 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 No. All opposed? No. no. All right. So we'll, the motion carries, and we'll be looking for the licensee to be in here in the morning with the license ready to sign an agreement that's hopefully prepared okay. by that time. Very good. Thank you again. Have a nice evening. All right. Thank you, Attorney Les Browns. I didn't know Thank we missed you. each other this much. I know it's been a month since the meeting, but like we're really. We're going to have to start meeting every week here. No, All right. No, Thank I can't. You. Thank you, yep. Lieutenant. Thank you, Thank you Lieutenant. Thank you, Lieutenant. Have a good night. All right. On to the next order of business, Obviously. which is. <laughs> a fun one. Which is? That's a first. That's a, that's probably a, a first all around for that kind of an arrangement, but that's okay. I think they call that pioneering. Review, <laughs> review the wastewater outreach schedule, Mr. Gilberto. Madam Chair, thank you. Uh, we did not put a detailed schedule in the meeting packet for this evening, uh, but instead wanted to have some just very general conversation about the timeline. Um, the working group uh, is uh, has been talking with our consultants. Um, Kleinfelder is the company. Um, that we've been working with and um, we are going to be asking the board to consider scheduling a workshop meeting um, between now and the August 8th meeting where we hope to be able to review in an informal um, setting it would be a public meeting but really geared towards presenting information to you and answering questions in advance of a presentation here in this room at a public meeting um, on zoom and on NORCAM um, where uh, the public would learn more about the project. Um, and this is, uh, would be the first step of um, outreach um, you know, among the board and then throughout the month of August and into September with some of the other impacted boards and commissions here in town with public workshops for residents at large to come to in the fall and then working towards a, a special town meeting that would occur sometime between November 14th uh, and the first week of December. Um, that's sort of the, the timeline that we're generally working off of. And that's a, a range. Uh, we talked about it being in the late fall, and of course that range is within the late fall. Um, 
the exact date would be something that we could recommend to the board as we get closer and, and do more preparation work, including consulting with you here. Um, so really the question is, can we find a date for a workshop meeting before August 8th? So remembering that we, it was hard for us to pinpoint August 8th, um, are you looking at, a, you, you don't want to do the, the you don't want to do that at our August 8th meeting? We would make the presentation at that meeting, but our goal is that to do a workshop style presentation to the board there's prior to that as well. Madam Chair, there's an awful lot of information that needs to be absorbed by every member of the board. Mr. Studo and myself are a little more intimately involved um, on a regular basis here, but uh, for the other colleagues here, there's an awful lot of information that needs to be presented to you um, in person. It's a little easier. Uh, and, and again, allow for your input and concerns and questions. You know, before we put it out to the general public to have the same interest, concerns, and uh, yeah. and all the rest. So uh, we're talking everything from, you know, uh, what's the return on investment, what's the betterments going to look like, and all those sorts of things. Uh, our consultants have put together a pretty good spreadsheet to to play with a little bit to see how it's going to impact people, in different scenarios. And I think it's important for the board members to be able to understand that devote just one meeting yeah. for that you know, for ourselves as a workshop. Okay, then so just the board ju itself. Ju just oh, the board itself. Okay. Just the board as a workshop to okay. go over what we have and how we're going to proceed with presenting it and so that everybody have a clear understanding so when you're out in the public you can okay. be in a better position to, to answer questions, uh, people's questions, yeah. because we right. recognize you haven't been able to devote the amount of time that's been required to date. And, okay. and it's about arming all the board members with all the facts because even us with me and Steve like when I tell you there's been there's been like three meetings where you talk about the same thing and you're like we've talked about this for seven hours and it took seven hours to like get to like not that we didn't have the but you know how you can have some raw data but it takes a lot of time to like just mm -hmm. interpret it and that's what I so I feel like I agree that it's something where for something this important where I feel like the smallest misspeak, is that a good way to put it, or misstatement mm -hmm. that just could derail something. I just feel that like the more information we can get out there to the board first because because I feel like the questions will go like the floodgates. And like I said, I mean, we'll do, you know, um, if you guys pick it all up in one meeting, well then everybody's gonna get an ice cream from me because it <laughs> took me about 10. So. Okay, so you're not necessarily talking about a Monday night. We could do it. Yeah, we on can a do it Tuesday, Wednesday, whatever works. Saturday, or like we do the strategic planning. Saturday. Maybe some, maybe some food. And a Saturday in the summer. Saturday in the summer. No. What? Are you rainy, saying? rainy Saturday in the summer. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, if we could do the first week, of some, you know, the first week of April, because you're away. First week of August. August. Yeah, first, of, uh, the first week. So the fourth, fifth, sixth. I'll be sixth. away. Anyway. Our meeting's on the 8th, you said, right? Yeah. Um, How open yeah, that I don't plan to Thursday. So the 1st through the 6th, though? Yeah. You can do the week of the 8th. I can't do the next week. The week of the 8th, those are meeting, right? I think meeting. it was before. You wanted before to do it before meeting. that? On the 8th. So well, again, we but you know if we have to put off the twenty fifth. Yeah, how about the twenty fifth? Open with my wife's date of the twenty seventh. I won't be around. Mr. Gilberto's away. I'll be away that week. You're not going to be able to that week. That week. Yeah. Yes, I will. Almost any other time I can be flight, but that week. Is next week. The twenty fifth. Five minutes from house. That works for you, Mr. Earlier. Are you away the next What's week? What's that? Are you away next week? Next week I'm away. Yeah. Next week. So you're away question. next week, you're away week the week after, and I'm away the week after. Uh, Maureen already <laughs> said that the audio went out. Okay. So it what are we looking at? You're not looking at a Monday night, right? It doesn't have it to doesn't be a Monday night. Be yeah. But I think our problem is we can't find a good week. <laughs> if we do a workshop, can we, are we allowed to do it like, like we did the uh, strategic meeting, where it's a public meeting, but just not all this? Yeah. Yeah, okay. that's what it would be. Yeah. I only ask because if we do it that week, I can still pull it off, but if we do it at the police station, it puts me five minutes closer to my house. Yeah. But my wife's due day two days away. Oh, I'm not right. kidding. On what day? Any time as we get closer to the 27th. Not that five minutes will make a difference, but I'm just saying. So it looks like... Is that a, that I thought...
fly in on Thursday. I have to work Friday. I could do Friday night. That's the fit. I'm working Saturday. Welcome to Zoom. Friday night. Enter Thursday. your meeting ID. We call it by town. Huh. But he can't. Mike can. He's I, I can. I can do it. Fri I can do Friday the fifth. Get everybody well, from Kleinfelder on a Friday. Thank you. Maybe. <laughs> well, I can be a couple. Oh, because so you have to have trouble hanging out yeah, with you the board want on the a Friday night. night. <laughs> oh, me? Yeah. Well, me too. Okay. okay. Does that work? <laughs> it's Friday What's going on the last week of July? Is that somebody else out? I'm away. He's away. You're going the last week of July. God. Hanging out with the board on a Friday night. Wouldn't be the first time I've Maybe not this board. Does that work for people? We'd be jello. <laughs> yeah. Just mold us in anything we want on a Friday night. I'm exhausted on a Friday night. Does it, yeah, does that work just so for everyone that Friday? It. What do we want to say? Six, six o'clock. Friday the fifth. Friday the fifth. I'm gonna get so much. Trouble. You're gonna get in trouble. <laughs> oh my god. I can do it. <laughs> I can do it. How early can we start? What time do you fly in? Yeah. Michael, will we do the uh, same like we do for the we'll I fly in Thursday and I have to work Friday. Yeah, at the, at like the work police Friday. station. I'll be in Lexington. Change it up, though, not Horseshoe. Till lunch, you get a bunch of stuff from uh, <laughs> China <laughs> Cuisine. <laughs> you put it in the middle of what? Let's you get take out this out. Let's take the day out. Because if we get out at 4, we can probably get in two hours. I'd have two days of people to do in one day. Yeah. Can we be? cut fast? <laughs> it's my memory. Can you be any scissor it's hand? my memory here. There's no predictability. Wait there. a minute. Are we What's we're so still on Friday the fifth? Well, I was just wondering if we could start at four and then at six, so it's like no. That won't be good for me either. Okay. So yeah. It's a work day. Uh, so we're doing at six. Six o'clock? Six o'clock. So workshop. Can we when? bring alcohol? On Friday night the sixth? <laughs> um absolutely <laughs> not. <laughs> Absolutely not. Night. I can do it. We are over 21. And it's not public. Do you think you can it's get those guys? It's in a guys public coming? building. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm very concerned. Can, can we get the alcohol? I, I think we better have two days. Yeah. I think we better have two days. You can yeah. sanction yeah. 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 I think you better pick it up. All right, everybody, let's let's so, let's it, zone in here. We're August 5th. I mean, uh, yes, August 5th. That's if we can get the. I have to get Greg on Friday to spend some quality time with us. You do? We have a consultant that we'd want to have. Yeah. So, so I got another idea. I know it'd be a really long night, but why don't we do it all on Monday the eighth when we start off with our workshop first? Because that'll take the whole night. Oh, it's going to take that long. It's like three hours, probably. It's three hours. Oh, three hours. Um, yeah. Yeah. This is yeah. Three hours and yeah, and we won't get through. Why don't we what tentatively about set it? We, we can't do Sunday. The right? consultant can Sunday. join us virtually over there, right? They have rest. I I think you're going to want them. In the room, but yeah, me, me too. Opposite, yeah. opposite. Have we never talked about this? What if we start really early in the morning? She can't. She's flying in. I'm, I'm not necessarily that week. Day. Maybe the next week or something. Could we do it. It's got to be before. I, yeah, I have, I have work, so that would be tough for me too. Okay. So I don't know if we start at seven and end at ten or something. But they're away, away, away. You're well, doing that Friday morning. Well, people are open. People are here the eighth, right? Yeah. The week of the eighth. So we do have some something in there. But they want it before the eighth. You want it before well, the eighth? What we were hoping to do was get everybody on board understanding where we're at and if everybody's okay with it then on the eighth. What about, about this week? Yeah, Did about, we talk about, about this week? week? I think the fifth is already the fifth is already pushing it because what happens is they Wait, why we want we all the board members' questions answered from the follow from that this workshop. Is, this week is out. Before this is out? the eighth. Yeah, it, um, it's hard enough for us to eight? schedule our. Uh, yeah. yeah, this this week is out. Okay. So, let. So this week. We, what about next week? Next week he's away. I don't have to be there. Then he's away. Then I'm away. I think it's pretty important for the five of us if we're calling a workshop. So that we can all understand, I think it's pretty important for the five of us to be there. It seems so like Friday the fifth is the best day. Yes. Is it possible for you to? Is it possible for us to do this workshop without the consultant? I don't think that's ideal, but no, you know what? I don't what, think so. No. What about the Saturday, the sixth? That's worse. Saturday. That's worse. That was her idea. Well, let's let's hold the fifth. Please, if we can hold, hold the, the fifth. Let's try to find two dates. The fifth being one. Can't even find one. <laughs> so fifth is one. The fifth is one. Six to nine, right? Yep. Hmm. Is there any other 
time before then? You guys, I'm pretty open. Who's gone on the 18th? You're gone on the 18th, right, Steve? Yeah, I'm gone. Uh, and then, gone Mike, you're gone on the 25th? Correct. Correct. And then, who's gone on the first? Left. Who's, who's, who's gone the week of the first? Yeah, I yeah. leave the 30th yeah. and I come back the 4th, <laughs> but I have to work in bed. And then, why is the 8th? Really important that we know about ahead of time. Well, what about I mean, what about Thursday night when I, I'll fly? What time do I fly? That was the first general presentation with a lot of the facts. That was I can do Thursday was. night when I fly in. I mean, I'm not gonna be pretty. But what time do you get in? <laughs> Where are you flying from? Dallas. Oh, what I time do you I, land? Actually, I'm giving a webinar that night Thursday night. My flight's at noon. I can do Thursday too. No, but I, I got a oh, webinar at Dougal 7.30. I don't even know what I'm Can we at. just lock in the fifth? I think that's... Yeah, then just see if Kleinfeld can make Let, it. Let's... Uh, which, so the only concern is, is yeah, it's a date that we've set, so the artificial deadlines is somewhat. But time is of the essence, too. We want to get this thing moving along and get it out to the public. And, uh, so we were targeting the eighth to make a presentation to the board. Uh, but if that can't happen, it gets put off until our September meeting. You know, as far as the presentation to the public, we can put together a workshop the week of the 8th or something like that. Um, <coughs> I mean, I think you know, it, all, all it does is it slides our, our timeline as far as, you know, public information hearings. And, you know, I mean, uh, I think we've we got, we got to have something on the 8th just to start, you know, putting it out there. And you know what, I mean, the worst case scenario is that if there's some unanswered questions from the fifth, you know, because we don't want to stay there till midnight, we just understand that as a board, right, when reviewing the information. Okay. You want to so check I mean, the, rea the reality yeah, is, is how many people are really paying attention on yeah, because it's in town be a, it's be a How many people are actually paying attention on obviously it's it's Not a lot. I hope they pay attention to this Maureen one. Maureen is. I know Maureen is, but you know. No, that's about it. But you'll get a better audience in September because people are going back to school. They're thinking this. Right. Thing. I mean, you, but this is more for us to have a better understanding. Oh no, I know. Right? I'm saying, but the, so. the, the the reason to get it in before the eighth was so that you could start to publicly talk but, about it on the eighth. Well, also, it, it's more because I think that um, we want to get all the information out there, whether or not people will ingest it because for whatever reason and they want to hold off, but. No one's going to come to this board, no matter how that goes down in our special town meeting, and say that they didn't have enough time to think about the info. So I think that even if we're giving, even if the it becomes an abridged presentation for the eighth, right? Because we could do that. It can be an abridged one from more of like you know the bigger bullet points. Well, I think I, something's got to get out. I think what we were looking to do, which I don't recall, is to have Kleinfeld come in and make a presentation to the Correct. board publicly. Uh, which would really be the kicking off of everything yeah. we're trying to accomplish here and what the impact is going to be on individual homeowners and those that are in the, the proposed district and how machinations are going to work. That um, would be on the 8th, right? Th that, would be on the, that would be on the 8th. Okay. But again, if we have to push that off, again, to the general point, we're looking to get it out there and get the discussion rolling and get as many people involved and get the input as much as possible. Uh, you know, if we feel comfortable with sliding that, that time frame, because we can't get ourselves together here as far as a date soon enough, uh, you know, I don't personally have that much of a problem of having the Kleinfelder presentation, public presentation, you know, the first meeting in September. In September. Uh, but again, we get September, October, you know, you, you, get, a, you get an eight week crunch period of trying to educate the public, you know. Okay. Let me just bring this to, to a bit of order. So we, we have we have the fifth set up. We're doing it as a board for our own edification. If we can't get the consultant there, we should just continue we should just keep that date and at least get get some ideas, get some understanding. Let's just keep the fifth. Set it for us. Hopefully they'll be able to join. Hopefully if they can't, maybe they'll give a presentation that Surely we have enough people here that will be able to walk us through what we need to know. Maybe we'll have a list of questions that derive from that, that workshop that, that they can then get transmitted for the presentation on the 8th. So let's, let, let's, let, let's lock in the 5th for us to meet. 
hopefully the consultant joins us. Because we also have to set up a schedule for the rest of our meetings. And we are engaging in a dialogue just about choosing a date for the workshop, which we already chose. So let's just keep to the fifth. That way we can get rolling and get a start on this, even if it's just bringing us up to speed on everything else other than whatever they're going to be presenting on the 8th. But it's likely that they'll have something for us if they can't attend in person. So let's just lock in the 5th for everybody. That seems to work. It's really hard to plug in. It's the summertime. Everybody's got different schedules. So we got the 5th, so we can... We now we need to, to decide on our regular meeting schedule. And we need to plug those in for a potential special meeting as well as for the regular town meeting. So, so that, let's lock those in as well. Now, if we have to do it another day. Yeah, we can continue. You know, I, I think let's just lock in the fifth. Let's just, okay. we're all gonna be there for Give the fifth. Give it a good shot. Let's just move on with the next, next item. The next item is scheduling remaining meeting dates for the okay. calendar year. So we already have the 8th, obviously. We do. I will note that that will be before the deadline for warrant articles to be submitted for the October town meeting, which is the following Monday, the 15th. Yes. So you, you will see what will be a list of standard articles at that point, and then not see a full list and a draft warrant until the first week in September. On the meeting notes, I had written in September 12th, but I'm remembering that when we looked at the calendar, that actually ends up being too late in order to mail the warrant to everybody's home. So we ran into this this past year, you may remember, we had to have a meeting on a Wednesday after Labor Day, so we could get the warrant to them by Friday, and then get it, it printed and mailed to a week later so that it arrived two weeks before town meeting. So. My suggestion is that we consider the Wednesday night meeting. The 7th? The 7th. Wow. And not the 12th? And not the 12th. So we would meet the 7th and then the 26th. I'm good with that. If I could just suggest not before 6.30, because that's my Lexington day. Yes. My, yep. my high time. The regular, the regular 6.30 start. Uh, yeah. 26 is Rosh Hashanah. Oh, okay, thank you. So another option would be to move that... 19th, maybe? Move that up a week. Let me just make sure that... So if we give the printer the warrant... So you said that the 7th? The 7th, Wednesday the 7th. Huh? He needs it before the 12th. No, no, he's saying for the second meeting. The second meeting. So we already have the first meeting on the 7th. The 7th appears to work. Yeah. And so the Mr. next one, he was saying the 26th best Rosh Hashanah, so you oh, want to move it up a week. I actually won't, you can still meet, I actually won't be able to do the 19th. So okay. that's how But it doesn't stop the board from meeting. Is that going to be the hearing? For that's going to be the hearing. It's <laughs> not hearing. I don't know. For the... Uh, the warrant article hearing for October town meeting. No, they are hearing for Lucky Mart. Mart. But also, plus, plus Lucky, no. Lucky Mart. Mart. We plus said the 26th in the motion. Oh, yeah. We did, that's right. Plus, so plus the now, uh, that's not that far away that I don't So what are you saying about, <laughs> wait a minute, what are you saying about the 19th? Well, you can't do it. We, we said the 26th for the next meeting. I know, meeting. but are you saying a meeting the 19th? Instead, Instead of the 26th. Because I won't be here. Oh, what, the 19th? No. Go on the Nobody needs to know. Okay. <laughs> Can we push the 26th to the 27th then? Tuesday. We just set that hearing date though, right? We, 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 we just notify. We'll, 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 we'll modify the motion now and, I and notify the... I won't be able to do the Tuesday night. Oh, that's right. Saturday. What can we do Wednesday? Wednesday the 19th? I'll be gone that whole week. Definitely. Okay, she'll be gone that whole week. What can you do the week of the 26th? <laughs> Remember, the 28th. Meeting's that can Monday. We do the 28th? Wednesday the 28th. Can we do Wednesday the 28th? Okay. Yes. Good. Is, is town uh -huh. meeting on the following week? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's the third. third. Town meeting's on the third. 28th? So, Wednesday the 28th. Good.
way. And we all discombobulated. <laughs> Wednesday, Wednesday. I should wake up on a Tuesday morning fresh <laughs> as opposed to exhausted. Tell okay. me who's the third. So now we've got two. We have Wednesday, Wednesday meetings. meetings in September. Yeah. So let, yeah. let's let just, we get town meeting October 3rd. Mm -hmm. Yes. And everybody, we do know that we typically meet a, a little earlier, right? Mm -hmm. The town meeting's at 7, we typically meet at 6, mm -hmm. just so everyone can diary that. Yep. Okay. And then they had October seventeenth. Let me just ask oh. this because I thought we were talking about some type of special town meeting. Are we on track for that? We're talking November. November. Oh, okay. November. November. The 15th, and if we have to push it off a little bit, it'd be like December 5th. Okay, so Fourth. town meeting on the 3rd, the 10th is a holiday. What's the next proposed date? October 17th, oh. a regular meeting when we would also anticipate asking the board to sign the special town meeting warrant if Ooh. the meeting is on track for November 14th. Okay, is everybody else can everybody meet on the 17th? Yep. yep. Then November seventh. Yep. We have. Wait a minute. We have a town meeting on the twenty fourth, right? The twenty fourth of November. Of November. For of what? October. October third is the town fall meeting. annual town meeting. Huh. What do you want? That? I, I think Kate's. In, in I think my, Kate's I, beyond her bedtime. I have it in my. my Maybe no, we, we threw some dates around where we first said maybe the 24th could be possible. I, oh, special. I had proposed a late October town meeting. Yes. Okay, so so that's where that, that came from. Delete oh, okay. that? Yes. Okay, so then the, ne the next proposed is the 7th of yeah. November? Yeah. So then we got the 17th of October and then the 7th of November? Yeah. Yes. And then what, what was the potential town meeting? The 14th. November 14th. 14th. Of November? Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's a special. This is special. Yeah, meet the tentatively. Wolves. So I, I will ask the schools. Say that one again. I'm sorry. November 14th mm -hmm. for the special town meeting special for Wayne's Okay. <laughs> and I, I will ask them to hold that date. And then as a backup, December 5th. And would that be the same? We meet at 6. Yeah. As we typically do. All right. Okay. But in December, what would be the regular town regular board meeting? I had it for the um, the fifth and nineteenth. So but we, we can't do the fifth if the we would need to move it to the twelfth. Yeah. So why don't we not set that yet? Or do you just block? I, I'm just saying. I need. I I want to make sure we we lock down yeah, the room at the school. That, yeah. That's what I'm trying to do. Put down the fifth for a potential special town meeting in or select meeting. Rainy. Yeah. And then if the special town meeting is pushed off till the 5th of December, our regular board meeting will be the 12th and the 19th. Okay, we need to review this because I'm, I want to lock it in here to make sure, but let's just go over this. Because <laughs> I'm not even sure if I added those in correctly. So start from next week. <laughs> so. I can't wait to call her and go, where are you? <laughs> so I have August 5th for a workshop, August 8th for a regular meeting. Slow it down. Sorry. Please. Slow, slow it down. Please. So the 5th is a sewer workshop to begin at 6. The 8th is our regular select board meeting. Yes. We already decided that. The Wednesdays. Wednesday the 7th is our next select board meeting. And Wednesday the 28th. 28th is our select board meeting. The town meeting is October 3rd. November 28th? September 28th. Oh September 28th. We went right. back in time. No, no, wait. Oh, we're just summarizing. Way back. Okay. So that I can make sure I have it in correctly. And all of you as well. Not you, Sigmund, and Pelvin Fallon. So, 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 
Town meeting October 3rd. Right? Regular select, yes, correct, yes. yes. Then a regular select board meeting October 17th. 17th. Okay. And then another regular select board meeting on November 7th. Yes. Oh, boy. Then a special town meeting for wastewater on November 14th. With a rain date of December 10th. So are we doing another select board? Regular select board meeting November 21st, which will likely be tax classification. It's the Monday before oh. Thanksgiving. That's a little fun. I skipped out. No, yeah. mother espresso. All right, so, so look at the board. It's getting late, folks. All right, select board meeting on the 21st. Yeah. Okay. And the fifth, the select board or special town meeting. Yes. Mm -hmm. we'll oh, so either way, hold the day. Doesn't hold matter. That day. Yeah. And then the 19th? The 19th. Yeah. Okay. And possibly the 12th. And, like, and possibly the what? The possibly 12th. the 12th. If we oh, have yeah. to use the 5th. If we have to use the 5th. Oh, that's funny. I gotta go see Santa. One of those days. All right. So that is Hanukkah, but it's not a high holiday, so no worries. So you're good. On the what, the 12th? On the December 19th. The 19th is. No, thank you. Yeah. No, no, but it's, it's not, not, right. it's not that, a high that's, holiday. Okay. Yeah. Are we going to spin the dreidel? She's going to send an email. Can spin the dreidel? Yeah, spin the dreidel. Sing songs. Oh, Be obnoxious. Have you not seen that? It happens every time you go. There's a little Jew in there. It's crazy. I grew up in a Jewish diet. There you go. Very familiar. Takes me both. All right. Just to go through. All right. So, so just run over those December dates again. All of them. December fifth <laughs> for uh, <laughs> either a select board meeting or a rain a, a, a oh, backup okay. date for a special town right. meeting. Good. December twelfth, if we have to have the special twelfth town meeting on the fifth, <laughs> we need to move the regular board meeting. December nineteenth for a regular board meeting. Yeah, we're not going to meet three Mondays in a row. I'm telling you that right now. It might happen. It might happen. All right. Okay. I can't imagine Don't anybody else. I'd rather spend the holidays with. Holy crap! Not only number eight of fifteen. I like you. No, but these are these are the quick ones now. Kind of. All right. Number nine, we're not doing. Go right. ahead, Mr. 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 Scudo, what? Mr. Mr. No, no, we are all set, right, Mr. O we're okay. Yeah. That's. That's good enough for now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we'll revisit it. Much as well. We'll on. keep it mod modified as we move along. But the next time we're meeting is for that workshop. Yes. yes. On the so, fifth. so is it? Will you be? Able, you can reach out to the. We'll reach out. To, we'll reach out to them right. tomorrow. Even if they can't attend, which hopefully they will, we'll, you'll still be able to review with us to give us a. You know, give us a time, whatever. We'll give you a flavor. We, we will. I just, I, hope, I would just ask everyone to understand that without the consultant, would be much, so we'll maybe much more limited. Well, what about the feasibility study? I wanted to. I know I was going to wait on this, but since it's, we're on the topic, has that been completed yet? No, it's close. Okay, so maybe that'll also be done by yeah. then. That we'll be able to review. That is an advantage to doing it that late. It may be. Yeah. Yeah. On the okay. blind dinner. So at least we'll be able to look at that. Okay, the next order of business, the memorandum, we're, we're tabling that till our next meeting. Yes. The next order of business is appointment for Board of Library, Trustees, and Facilities Master Plan Committee. Okay. I can look at that. It's a mouthful, you know. Okay, I'm ready. Good. Yeah. Okay. Madam Chair, I move to place the nomination of the following name for appointment to the Facilities Master Plan Committee, Warren Pierce, to expire July 11, 2023. Second. Motion by Mr. Walner, second by Mr. O'Leary. Um, it's a roll call. Any other discussion? Mr. O'Leary. Warren Pierce. Mr. Walner. Uh, Warren Pierce. Mrs. Gonzalez. Warren Pierce. Mr. Studo. Warren Pierce. And Manu Kelly is Mr. Pierce. Okay, Madam Chair, I move to place a nomination of the following name for reappointment to the Board of Library Trustees for term to expire on December 31, 2024. Maxine McPherson. 
Second. Second. Yeah. <laughs> Motion <laughs> by Mr. Walner, second by Mr. O'Leary. You got it anyway. <laughs> any further discussion? This is a roll call vote. Mr. O'Leary. Maxine McPherson. Mr. Walner. Maxine McPherson. Mrs. Gonzalez. Maxine McPherson. Mr. Studo. Maxine McPherson. And Manu Kelly's Ms. McPherson. All right, our next order of business is legal. That was it for appointments, right, Mr. Walton? Yes, it is. The next order of business is legal bills. Yep. Madam Chair, I move to approve legal bills for May 2022 in the amount of $10,326.34 as follows. General, $7,456.34. Labor, $2,562.50. 20 Elm Street, $307.50 for a total of $10,326.34. Second. Motion by Mr. Walner, second by Mr. O'Leary. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Madam Chair, I move to approve legal bills for June 2022 in the amount of $6,639.09 as follows. General. $6,095.84, labor, $543.25, and for a total of 6639.09. Second. Motion by Mr. Walner, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Madam Chair, I move to approve invoice 11423 in the amount of $54,363.92 to Furman Gregory De Deptula for legal services for the secondary school building project litigation. Second. Motion by Mr. Walner, second by Ms. Jill O'Leary. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I chose the wrong profession. All, all set with legal bills, right, Mr. Walner? That's it. Our next order of business is the town administrator's report. Mr. Gilberto. I have no report this evening. Our next order of business will do <laughs> board member reports and all the new business at, at all at once. Mr. O'Leary. Uh, just Board of Health, I think everybody was notified and was published in the newspaper uh, in concert with the town administration, the school administration, had sat down to say, okay, what are we going to do moving forward in relation to COVID? And uh, they're looking to stay the course in relation to taking the guidance from the CDC and uh, state uh, health department at this point in time, but meet on a regular basis and we'll continue to monitor as things occur. But they want the public to know that they're thinking ahead and uh, continue to run some clinics and um, just ask everybody to be safe and be smart about things. And then the other thing is, uh, well, Mrs. Gonzalez, I uh, had the pleasure of being there at the uh, swearing in of the new police officers. It's great. Three more yeah. able bodied people here and our second woman on the force. Yay. First one in a long time. And uh, most, well, very bright and energetic people and look forward to them having a long career with us. And uh, congratulations to them and to the uh, chief of the department and the administration for filling the ranks. So it's <coughs> great. And that, I'll say. All right, thank you, Mr. Walner. Okay, two things happened. One is um, we had a modest uh, showing for the Juneteenth that was celebrated at, at Ipswich River Park. So there was just some readings, some history, background. Uh, some of the kids did some of the readings as well. We had about 30, 40 people there. So for next year, I'll plan to write up some sort of proclamation because it's kind of run by us. Great. It's kind of fast. But it was good that we got something going, and we'll do it again next year. So that's the first time we've ever done that. It's good to have it done. Um, second thing is, on the same spirit, is there's going to be a uh, Merrimack Valley Black and Brown owned market um, at Ipswich River Park from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m on Sunday, July 31st. So this is the first time that this group was kind of resistant to come join us because of some of the public displays of <laughs> uh, that they've heard through some of our meetings. Um, but the uh, human rights group got them to come. And so they're coming here for the first time. And it'd be good if the town came out Who and supported it? them. So this is the um, black and brown uh, markets. It's minorities who come oh, in. Yeah, yeah, and we, we we're sponsoring them. They're going to be at Sir River Park. And it'd be good if we went and attended and, you know, if you see something you like, buy it. Be good to do that. So just two things on the, on, on the order of social issues. That's it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Mrs. Gonzalez. Uh, just a couple of things. Um, at the EDC, um, talking about the shop, the Reddings again, um, 
and getting that going again this year. Um, talked about town day. Um, also, Reading Light talked about um, donating three chargers, um, car, electric chargers for the town. So um, and I talked to the VA about that. Um, I, I, are they going to come to a meeting and discuss it? They'll come to a meeting. I'm actually meeting with the, uh, the new general manager. Mm -hmm. um, Wednesday or Thursday of this okay. week too. So it'll be something we'll discuss. Yeah, so that's something that we'll we'll discuss. Um, and then CPC, um, they talked about that 70 Concord Street that mm -hmm. um, the DEP has walked away from it. So they didn't have a whole lot more information, but um, they're all done. Yes. Doing coming up there. And we are, Madam Chair, through you. We are in turn. Um, I've asked the town planner to work with town council to see if we can re restart the work that we had done leading up to basically the beginning of the pandemic to try to get that park property on the market to move. So hopefully that will gain some traction. Um, yeah, that's basically it. That's so just a question. Mm -hmm. So that's that property that had the the contamination, the forever yeah. chemicals in it, mm -hmm. and so it could be sold now without that being taken care of. Um, it, it could have been sold prior. I, I think okay. from what I understand, the DEP's feeling is that their systems have done what, it, what, they, what can. they can do yeah. to the extent that they can do a cleanup there. That doesn't mean that the property um, is totally clean. Um, it doesn't mean that it can't be reused for some limited impact purpose either. So um, I think our feeling was, you know, it's good timing from this standpoint that they've kind of, if it's in the condition that it's going to be in now, it's, we can market it as is. and. Um, again, we have to foreclose on uh, unpaid taxes in order to acquire it, but the goal is to then turn it right back to uh, whoever we select through an RFP process to, to buy it. But uh, I, again, I'm, I'm not, I don't have any official notice, but my, my understanding is it's not totally cleaned up, um, but that does not mean that it's not usable for some purpose either. And that was what we were told four years ago, too, that it was not totally clean but could be redeveloped. And again, if the town were to foreclose on it, we wouldn't be held liable for the additional cleanup, which was the concern before, right. we weren't able to foreclose on. Right. And uh, until the special legislation passed that mm -hmm. allowed for sites such as this to get clear title and then move it along mm -hmm. and allow it to be developed again. So that was a good thing. But that was, like I said, that was like four years ago. Right. And it was that moving was. ahead. And, but that was actually good news for us because. We just, so much was owed on it. We couldn't sell it for less than what was owed. There were a whole bunch of other hurdles mm -hmm. aside from the contamination. And most of those hurdles have been removed, so it's good. You were on the board back then, right? Yeah, Mr. we were just Walmart. on the board when that came CPC? No. no. No, no, no. This I, board. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, it's been, been in my head, yeah. We would, we would do a taking transaction simultaneously with divesting right. everything because we, to avoid that, you can't be holding on to it for a long right. period of time right. to avoid the 21 e issue. But we could not become liable through a tax taking, but right. then we wouldn't hmm. hold it. There was a developer interest. Is that developer no longer interested? There's a few that have expressed interest over the past few years. Right. And with the talk of SOAR, I think that's even better. Oh, yeah, that's true. All right, so I, I should Wong. just add the CPC, Leon and I went and talked to them about doing accessory dwelling unit policies. Oh, that's and right, too. Yeah, yeah they're going to work Sorry. on that. That was very clear. We gave them the message that we'd really so like to get a working group to work on that. Together. So they've they yeah. got the message they want to do that. So they're going to come back to us with information right. about that. So, right. yeah, okay. very important objective. Good. All right, let's just, let's just do them. I have nothing. All right, okay. And uh, that map, uh, the master's planning, master facilities master planning. planning. Yeah. We did a little tour of the fire station, which was pretty eye opening. So that's for purposes of their studying and the architecture to expand the building and the, the effort that's gone underway to, to look at that and figure out what needs to be done there. So. How many and more bunk it. beds you could fit in, and, and yes. things like that. What's that? How many more bunk beds you could fit in? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it was a question. Yeah. <laughs> we should really, um, hopefully, the 
that something that does come to the board quickly for some major renovation to that building. It has the footprint and it can be expanded to accommodate, you know, giving people their own rooms, you know, not bunk beds. And, you know, and, and then that would also then accommodate adding adding uh, female staff there if everyone had their own rooms. And it needs to be modified anyway to expand the bay to be able to hold the fire engines in there safely. And uh, so that was a good, the architect t t walked us through all of that. Yeah. Mr. Walner and I attended that with the, with the members of the committee, the other members of the committee and the TA. So I think it's really important for us to support that. And we can. We can do better there to be able to renovate it so that it's. And if, if that gets hooked up to the school's sewer um, facility, that opens up that whole front area, right? Isn't that where they're separate? With or without, you can. You, with or without, you can still open up that front area. Yeah, it wasn't. It's it's intended to bump it out. There's a natural bump out that would be just enough space, but where the bays are for some reason aren't built out there. But I believe when I asked that question, they weren't intending to remove anything no. Um, no. from the front. So they, that that's already... Um, it already go there. Exactly. Okay. Yes, it's As not, is. As the is. hookup isn't intended to the hookup isn't intended to remove the sewer. It's just intended to tie everything into the to the wa okay. water, you know, the water treatment plant. But um, that Mr. Gilberto, correct me if I'm wrong, but we also received a letter on a possible funding or an earmark that was put in place for uh, for the tie-ins. That's right? correct. I've been working closely with Congressman Moulton's office and submitted applications through Senator Warren, Senator Markey, and um, I am cautiously optimistic that we are gonna be a strong candidate for a significant amount of funding toward that project. Great, well, um, we really appreciate that. Yeah, that's great. That will great. save, if that goal comes yeah. through for us, that would be great. Uh, it would be huge. It would be yeah. huge for us, so we appreciate your staying on top of that for us. Okay, that's all I have. Does anyone have a motion to adjourn? Mm -hmm. Oh, I do. Uh, <laughs> Madam Chair, I move to adjourn. Let's second that. Motion to adjourn, seconded by Ms. Riley. All those in favor? Aye. Aye.